All right, look, we're getting ready to go into this episode. As a heads up, we talk about Nine as if you've all seen it. So if you don't want any Nine spoilers, avoid this episode. If you've seen Nine or you don't give a shit, then by all means, uh, enjoy. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Force Sensitive. First time that we've done one in person. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to it. We have two guests today. I have Gort to my right. And then we also have Gort's lovely wife, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Hello. And we have, you may know him from your favorite pie chart creator. You may know him from (laughs) End of the Realm or Breaking the Mold or one of six other Realm of Collectors related podcasts. We have Brian Brink, the Brinkalizer. Hey, everybody. So we just saw episode nine last night. Uh, I edited the video till three o'clock in the morning and then I went to sleep and then my wife woke me up. And now we're doing this at 9 o'clock in the morning. So I'm not firing on all cylinders quite yet. But it's not really my story to tell, is it? No, it's not. Tell me about the first time you remember seeing Star Wars. Seeing Star Wars? Hmm. I was... All right, so for me, Mm -hmm. I have seen them all in the theater. My mom told me that When I was five months old, I went to the theater with them to see A New Hope. So I was born in 77, Mm -hmm. January. Capricorn. Oh, God. Make some noise. (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) So I obviously don't remember that. And to be honest, I don't remember seeing Empire in the theater, and I don't remember my experience for seeing Return of the Jedi in the theater either. But you did see them in the theater. But they were all seen in the theater. Um, And... So obviously, uh, Empire was when I was three years old. Um, I've got a feeling that A New Hope must have aired on TV or something before that, because mm. there's no way that I didn't experience A New Hope before Empire. Um, and it may have been that your, yeah. you know, whatever it was, five year old mind remembered your three year old, or you know what I mean. Whereas your yeah. thirty eight, whatever the fuck you are now, doesn't remember your perhaps, you know. But uh, my earliest Star Wars memory uh-huh. uh, necessarily wasn't the movies, but okay. I, I do remember playing in the front yard. My uh, in front of my house, there was this. Uh, you might want to call it a, like a garden patch, but not a lot of flowers. But there is this weird ivy stuff that was glow that would grow low to the ground, and basically that was like Dagobah for me. You know the. <laughs> The ships would land in that patch yeah. and all that stuff, and you know, walking around the, the the plants that are like six inches high with these figures is like walking in the forest. It's one of the things I remember. I think you know, it's funny. I think Star Wars toys were the only toys that I was big on playing outside and like in their environments with. Like when it snowed, the hoth shit came out. <laughs> you know, like when when we had the sandbox, the Java stuff came out. When we had, you know, just a, like went to a woody wooded area, like I would bring the indoor stuff, like. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's any other toy line that I had that I was like, oh, my God, it's I'm in this particular type of environment. I need to take advantage of it and play this out. You know, it's interesting because I, I feel like a lot of people did do that, you know, with that. I don't, and I don't know if it's because I don't feel like I did it with G.I. Joe either. So it's not the scale. It's definitely the material. Right. right? <clears throat> it's interesting. Um, Were you a big collector? Did you like all into the toys? Yeah. As a big so, well, the interesting thing, the interesting thing you say that. All of my Star Wars toys were Empire and Forward. I never had New Hope versions of any of the main cast. That's strange. Yes. So, um, again, I was three years old when Empire came out. So I'm guessing that's when my parents started buying the toys. But they never stopped making them. I know, but and that's odd, right? So, yeah. So why did, did my collection, which was probably given to me at Christmas, I would expect, mm-hmm. was only... The Empire versions of those folks. It was it was very strange to me as well. So your Han Solo was it with the Hoth coat, blue jacket? Okay. Yeah. So that was. So I had the I had the <laughs> the New Hope one too, but it looked so dumb that I only played with the blue jacket one. Did you have the one with <clears> the <throat> huge like head? Yes. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> my, yeah, my Luke was basically uh, in his uh, Dagobah Bespin uh, fatigues or whatever. Uh, super yellow hair. I remember yeah. that. Um, I never remember having a, a lightsaber for him, but from what I understand, he held a yellow one with a handle. Does yeah. that sound yep. right? Yeah. Um, 
I had the Dagobah playset. Um, but the, and and my Leia was her burgundy outfit with the the pink plastic oh, yeah, thing yeah, 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 wrapped yeah. around her shoulders. That's a good Leia to have, I think. Yep. That was a nice figure. You know, the the the, the classic one wasn't bad either, though. I no. feel like yeah, I feel like that she had pretty good figures across the board. Yeah, hers, really? hers at least looked like her. Yeah. <laughs> more than some of them. More than some, yeah. yeah. The one thing I liked about that Leia figure was in the Millennium Falcon, <clears throat> she could actually sit in that upside-down seat because her mm-hmm. legs are so small. Yeah, 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 yeah. She couldn't yeah. fit any of those other figures in there. Luke, Luke looked like what a Lego person would look like in real life. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, so I had that. I had a bunch of vehicles. I had the, uh, the AT-AT or AT-AT. As we called it back in the day, mm. um, snow speeder, the the troop carrier, that thing that looked like a suitcase, you know, it was. Uh, and one thing I remember was I kept all my toys in the basement, and it was unfinished. It was it was like a dungeon down there, and <clears throat> my dad had these like weird wooden pallets, and I remember like sometimes in the morning I would go down there. And I would display all my stuff. I put all the vehicles in the back, and I'd stand up every figure. And then, you know, I don't know, you, you jostle the thing, and they all fall down. And, like, all right, and that was fun for a while, and then you just, you know, move on to the next toy. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember doing that quite a bit. And um, I always enjoyed making sure that I that I had the full cast and putting them all in the Falcon and just yeah. zooming them around the house. Absolutely. Except, you know, as a kid, I felt like the Falcon was like, it was more of a playset for me, because mm-hmm. like I was like, Whoa. like good. <laughs> can you give me help? I'm gonna take this thing from here to there. Um, <clears throat> trying to think, if there's anything that I ever really wanted from Star Wars from a toy perspective that never had. I don't think there was. No figures. <clears throat> no, I mean, I ended up eventually getting a Jedi Luke because mm-hmm. uh, my other one the head snapped off, so it was kind of nice to get a replacement. Um, eventually, but uh, and I was never really left wanting there. I had I had the the Millennium Falcon. I think was the one that was most important to me. Um, the X wing that I had though, it was um, it was white. I remember uh, there were other versions. I remember that were gray that kind of had battle damage stickers on it. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah, that's a that was a later release. I think the original one is what you're talking then, okay. without the stickers. Yeah. And, uh, I, I always wanted an EV-99. That was like my the one I was after as a kid. Like I was obsessed with all getting all the characters in Jabba's Palace or what have you, and I, I wanted that character so bad I never saw it anywhere. A new acquisition? Well, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I also distinctly remember something regarding uh, the canopy for that X-Wing. You like, said a can of peas? Can of peas. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The, the canopy... Mm-hmm. Um, I remember being surprised that I never lost it until it actually did get lost. And I remember searching that garden forever, trying to find it. Mm. It's just one memory that kind of comes out to me. Mm. See, I, most of my Star Wars toys were hand-me-downs. I had a cousin that was getting too old for it, and so to speak. <laughs> he says at 40. Um <laughs> But my Falcon, missing pieces. Death Star was missing all the struts. Uh, it was missing the gun. Like, so it was just this circle thing that, like, slid back and forth. It was, looked totally dumb. It was missing the trash monster. It was missing the all the styrofoam, obviously, all that stuff. So, like, but it, I, I, it, and I had the Endor thing from my cousin also that was missing pieces. But, like, I never... Yeah, I did that too. Yeah, it's awesome. It, I remember when the Robin Hood one came out. I contemplated buying it just to like fill in some of the pieces that I was missing, like some of the struts on the side of yeah. the. Yeah. Um, the Robin one had uh, had, the, had trees. the trees. The yes, and stuff. which was nice. Also, it would have been a nice addition to my indoor set. But um, yeah, a lot of the like I had a lot of the stuff. Nothing was in any sort of decent condition, but I didn't give a shit. Like I, I got, you know what I mean? Like the popsicle sticks were fine. Now I'd be like, no, scour eBay. We're gonna get the, you know. <laughs> it's funny. So, you see all the movies? Did you have them at home recorded or so, that kind of stuff too? Yeah. So one of my other fond move, fond memories is is I think this is after I moved in with my dad, which is funny because it's it's got to be eighty six time frame, but 
uh, I had the movie. He taped them off of TV. Uh, so we had a VCR, I think, at that time. I don't, I don't remember when we got the first. Let me just get to it. One of the fond memories I had, I can't remember what year it is. <clears throat> it's way after the movies came out, though, a few years at least. I had A New Hope on a videotape with, you know, I don't know, the ALF special was, you know, also on there. And, right. <laughs> Uh, Return of the Jedi and Empire, they're all on separate tapes, I remember, mixed in with Disney Day Off or something like that. And I would wake up early in the morning on Saturday and I'd watch at least one of them every weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, like, I, there would, like, be some times where my dad would sleep in uh, quite a bit on the weekends, actually. And, like, I would just sit there with, like, a bag of nacho cheese Doritos and watching Star Wars or something. Like, that would be my breakfast. Those were good times mm. back then. And, you know, I just, you know, one of the things I remember too is like my dad always sat on the couch when we were watching TV in the living room. But those early Saturday mornings, that was my time to sit on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's good stuff. Did um, what did you? How, how did you find yourself making the way through the the dark ages? Well, the dark times. The dark times. What's that? Uh, Jedi to <clears throat> after Phantom Jedi Menace. to probably I mean it, uh, whenever like the books the Power of the Force when all that so, started coming back uh, around the special editions I guess yeah like ninety five is when Kenner started putting out product again but before that you had the books starting in ninety one I think Dark Horse comics were starting at the end of ninety three definitely ninety four for uh, Dark Empire and. But I mean, from those before that, there's not a lot. There's hardly anything. A couple of video games and like Super Super uh, Star Wars, Super Return, you know, all that kind of stuff. But West End Games had the RPG. Which that's was true. Like, but super alluring yeah. to me as a kid, the, the West End games. Like, and I remember seeing uh, man, like you know, yep. you, whenever you see like tabletop strategy games, they always photograph them like in the perfect terrain and the perfect paint jobs, and I'm like, this looks awesome. And then you get it, you're like, why does mine look like shit? Like, well, because you don't know, because <laughs> uh, you don't know how to paint them, and they're sitting, sitting on a checkers board. That's why. I still have rule books from that. I do too. I do too. I think. I think. Well, yeah. Speaking of books, actually, before we get to the dark times, I saw these uh, story books that you have here, Bobby. Oh yeah. Empire and Return. Yeah, those are mine. Oh, yeah. So I had those as a kid too, and I remember spending a lot of time reading those before you could watch them because. Back then, we didn't have stuff on streaming. We didn't have it on DVD. We didn't have it on VHS. Pull, pull down Return for me. Just for the listeners, this is the Random House Return of the Jedi storybook based on the movie. <laughs> Has uh, Luke Skywalker on the cover with the green blade ignited on Jabba's uh, sail barge. And Gort, Gort apparently knows about Gordon. So I used to take this book out at the library when I was in third or fourth grade, and that was the only Star Wars book that they had, and I was excited to flip through it and look at it. And something that I remember is, like I'm showing you guys the picture here, uh, the lightsabers, like they just look so different than what was actually in the movie, and I used to get confused by that. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it different? Why isn't it just a still from the movie? Yeah. I guess it was bef maybe they made the prints before the effects before they like rotoscoped it all in or whatever they did yeah that's interesting i thought you were going to point out here like right here is the first time <laughs> yeah. he said you know. well it's you know it's funny the stuff that's in the book and different from the movie is uh i got I like no gore they look the same to me not vader's look at vader's yeah, in particular it's the color and the shape of the it, shape is like, like pointy. pointy yeah there might be other pictures in there that are more indicative of what I mean. Like it's, it's coming this is the to way, a point. This is the way it looked on those VHSs that we taped when we taped it from TV. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I believe it. There's enough versions. But, uh, the New Hope book, which you, which you don't have here. No, nope, I never had it. Uh, there's a a scene in there where it shows Luke talking to Biggs on Tatooine. I have seen that. Maybe I did have it because I definitely have seen that. After reading these books so often. You know, it was always an over. Remember, we I used to watch it all the time, taped from TV, and you know they would always edit it mm. for time. So I knew that they was always cut stuff out. So when you were able to buy the movie, like the full length movie, I remember the first uh, set we got was it was uh, it was a dark blue box Star Wars. I think it was in red and just had blue trilogy on it. 
I remember with the fold open doors. Yes. Okay. Uh, I remember New Hope time. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see that scene. I'll, I want to hear what he says to Biggs. And, and it wasn't there. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. But some of those some of those scenes, I'm kind of surprised he didn't put in. Because they are kind of cool, like those, uh, delete, those deleted it, scenes. But they're cool to watch as a standalone. When you throw them into the movie, it really hurts the flow. Maybe. Yeah. And there's Maybe. a lot of footage from Tatooine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With him and the, those his buddies. like that. But I think that's still, that's still Lucas trying to make uh, American graffiti in space. You know, yeah. like, you know, they're hanging out at the car shop. Yep, and, yep. Um, uh, something else I want to ask you guys watching mm-hmm. the movies as kids mm-hmm. uh, they always talk about the dialogue in these movies you know it's not eight, Shakespeare right right but you know when you're three to six years old and you're hearing like diplomatic mission <laughs> uh, senate and consularship and, yes cons- <laughs> yes consularship and uh <laughs> <laughs> your, okay. your ancient devotion to that religion help, mm. didn't help you conjure up yeah you know, stolen data tapes you, when you're kids dad what's a data tape yeah <laughs> when you when you go through this like I never remember <laughs> I never remember asking my parents what these words meant and I'm just kind of wondering I mean do you discover the words later in life it's like oh so that's what they were really talking about in that scene when you grew up do you ever think about that yeah I think I, as a kid, you know, I was never the kid that asked those questions, though. Like, I, I was, either. yeah, like, I just rode with it. And I, it was, to me, it was about the kind of the, the vibe, mm-hmm. you know, like, I was like, look, I know this character is unhappy with this character. Yeah. I don't know what the words mean, but I understand the threat, you yeah. know, and like, as a, and then as you get older, like, there's still some shit that'll pop up in some of these movies, Rob. Like, yesterday, the Kerr, Kerr. you yes. know, where I'm like, you know, I just, it's not something I zero in on. And then it's like, oh, shit, that's crazy, you know? And, or uh, goofy, depending uh, on the circumstances. <laughs> but and delusions of grandeur was always so prominent as well. At least when they mentioned it twice, it so prominent to me. I agree, and I used to say that as a kid. Had no idea what it meant. <laughs> but like any any time anybody would like achieve something, I'd be like, "You have delusions of grandeur." I really didn't know what it meant because like there wasn't a delusion; it was a real reality grandeur, you know. Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, but sometimes I catch myself watching old movies from my childhood. I'm like, I wonder if I ever knew what these words meant. Well, I told you, I mean, the, some of the, the overtly sexual context of, of some movies when I was a kid, like I had no concept of. And it's funny because I kind of hide my kids from that stuff. You don't need to. And you don't Your need kid, to. As a yeah. kid's mind, you accept it as just what it is just, for face value. Yeah. Because you don't know to look deeper into it. Yeah. It's not in your inclination. So interesting. Yeah. You know, my, my, my you know, Jana just recently asked me what virgins were and all this kind of stuff because we watched Adam's Family and it was all virgin talk in that movie. Mm-hmm. But I, did, I was too tired and hungover, so I just told her it was Virginians. <laughs> <laughs> People from Virginia. <laughs> um. Okay, Dark Ages. Uh, so for me, I mean, by the time I was in eighth grade, ninety one, I probably I was I wasn't playing with toys anymore. Might break out the Lego set every once in a while, but uh, yeah, man, I just you know went through high school and became a jock, and then went to college, and became you know like a an, a washed up jock. I drank a lot and stuff like that, and I didn't I didn't read comics i didn't uh didn't collect toys hmm. oh wait i take that back power of the force that was i thought you were getting ready to walk it 95. all back <laughs> no, it wasn't a job 95. i actually did collect toys <laughs> 95 so yes i think i was home it was summertime school was over um summer job and i i was in college at that point i think it was my first summer home from college and uh I do remember getting up early one day, going to Toys R Us, but like, I'm going to buy some fucking Star Wars toys today. Mm-hmm. This is my job. I'm going to go. First, I'm going to hit up uh, McDonald's, get a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, and I'm going to go to Toys R Us and walk around and, and see what happens. Nice. And uh, so I picked up, dude, I was like, why is Luke so swole, you know, <laughs> and stuff. Um, I, but I, I ended up getting back toys when I... When I left my childhood home, I think I gave away a lot of my toys to kids down the street, stuff like that. I had some of the figures, but I gave them all the uh, all the vehicles and things. 
So I picked up the Millennium Falcon. I picked up an X-Wing. I think I picked up a Slave 1 because I never mm. had that one. Yeah, me too. And I picked up two Stormtroopers. Dude, I had two Stormtroopers now because I only always had one as a kid. And they have to stand like this. <laughs> like the, 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 the way that the knee, because there was no knee joint, so the, the yeah. feet had to be offset yeah. in order to kind of stand. And I remember doing something weird. Like I stood them up on this uh, on this hutch in my in my bedroom, and I was like, wow. Stain them all up there, just like the old days. I was like, this is great. I was like, dude, they're going to get dusty, though. So I don't know what came over me, but I found a bunch of plastic straws and saran wrap, and I built like a frame huh. uh, <laughs> to frame out basically a, a display case out of saran wrap and straws to put on top of them. This is the IKEA prototype? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Early magic case. Yeah. And I put them on there, and all the figures stayed standing. I was like, oh, so proud of myself. But it, you couldn't see through the saran wrap. I don't know what the <laughs> hell I was saying. I was like, oh, this is kind of dumb. But I just remember doing that for some reason. Yeah, I, I, that, you know, they're, they looked ridiculous, those first couple waves. But I didn't give a shit. Yeah. I, I was so happy. Like, it was back. Like, you know, like... I just remember, like, in you know, pre-internet, so you don't know, and like, just walking into a store and like, wait, what? <laughs> like, when? Why didn't I? Why didn't you, Ben? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Like, that, like, just being shocked and like, I, I gotta have all of this. I need all of this, and like, you know, it was a chance to get vehicles that you never had as yeah. a kid, and like, it was that was a mind-blowing experience for me. Yeah, yeah. and then again, it feels good. I was like. I'm- I got an X wing and I got a canopy for right, right now. A can of peas. Yeah. Did you um, did you read any of the books at all? So I do want to talk about that too. Mm-hmm. I um, I didn't read any novels until after I graduated college. Mm-hmm. However, though, when I would go to visit my mom back when I was in high school and in college, uh, we go to church, go to Bennigan's, go to Barnes and Noble. It's like the Sunday morning. Church, Bennigan's, Barnes and Noble. Yeah. It seemed to be two out of three ain't bad. You know what I mean? Did. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as a kid, I used to hate going to mass as a kid. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! All my whole day's shot. You know, like, that's how I used to feel. <laughs> well, it's, it's not so bad when you have a uh, a royal crown bag full of Ewoks with you. Oh, that's pretty nice. I used to do that a lot. I had a nun steal my matchbox car once in Sunday school. That's a fact. Oh man. Oh I mean, wait, wait. She confiscated it. Just never gave it back. But it was the one that looked like a monster. Yeah, or something? the little purple dragon one mm. sat on top of them. Um, so anyway, uh, back to back to Barnes and Noble. So <clears throat> I distinctly remember picking up. I don't know if you have it here, Bobby. You have quite a Star Wars library, mm. but um, again, this was had to have been mid '90s, early mm-hmm. to mid '90s. I remember picking up a Star Wars encyclopedia, and well, let me just flip to Darth Vader. Let me look at some pics. I mean, my my stepfather's. Who knows what he's reading? He's a he's a he's a he's a, he's a reader. Uh, and so I'm just killing time and it explains how Darth Vader came about him and Kenobi had a fight in a volcano and there was lava involved and huh. got burned really bad. I'm like, oh, cause we've often talked about that, how that has be, it became part of the consciousness, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know how, like, and it's the same with Palpatine. Like I always know that the emperor was Palpatine as a, as a, as a young adult before the prequels, mm-hmm. but I don't know why I know that. Yep. I just know that. And, and that goes to my next point. Kind of so, so, so seeds here for later on in this conversation. But uh, there's the other thing, too. All right, let me flip to the Emperor. It's like, oh, his name is Palpatine. Never knew that mm-hmm. until I, until that fateful day I'm reading that. I was like, huh. All right, so let's just store that back for later. Back to the dark times. That's what I did. I read Star Wars books after church, and I collected some Power of the Force in, in the summer that one time. Hmm. And then after that, it was... Uh, I was a, a senior in college when, when that trailer for Phantom Menace dropped. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I think last night just got me all, my mind all <laughs> fragmented. Uh, freshman year, Dark Forces. Uh, the, the video, video game, yeah. the first person shooter. Yes. Uh, I ended up getting a LucasArts like, sampler of video games. And that was in it. It had one playable level. Oh, was that with like, um, I'm trying to remember some of the other games that were in there. Was there like a Sam and Max and a bunch of stuff in yes. there? Yes. Yeah. There's an Indiana Jones game, I think, in there, if I remember correctly. I, I remember I had some kind of sampler. There was a Rebel Assault, and, I, and a couple of them didn't work on the computer, mm-hmm. and it was disappointing. Or you needed a joystick, and my dad would not buy me a joystick. So it's funny because, like, whenever we, we talk about the PC games and stuff, like, 
you know, at like the, the DOS era, mm-hmm. you know, I always hear your people talk about it so fondly, right? But what you have to understand is that in my home, it was fucking me and my dad, who was 50 years old and a blue collar guy, we would be spending 30, 45 minutes trying to figure out how to do a DOS. Yeah. Like you turn a thing on, you, you know what I mean? You're like, I'm like, seek, uh, but one period, the one with one is one period over top of another period. Why would you make two periods sitting on top of each other? But that's, you know, <laughs> you know, that was us trying to set my dad's got his glasses on. He we're inside the manuals and shit. Like, you, you, cause we just didn't know how to operate it. You have to edit your auto exec dot bat file on your MS config files. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But I mean, both. I mean, I mean, for hours trying to figure, like where, like we bought Tie Fighter and all this stuff, and I, mm-hmm. I like, I got lost playing it. But um, I, and I enjoy, I enjoyed playing it. But it was such a burden for me to figure out how to turn the computer mm-hmm. on that, like, I never really, I didn't play it a whole lot. Yeah. So I was, I ended up becoming a computer nerd in college. Basically, I was building computers. I was learning all about them. Ended up being my what I got my degree in. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, I was, you know creating boot disks, you know, make sure I can figure out how to play Dark Forces. And there's no internet back then. Mm. Basically, you get a, you call, and sometimes they'd answer, and sometimes you get someone who could answer your questions for you. And uh, with Dark Forces, it was one playable layout level, and I played it all the time. Yeah. Every day. I mean, there'd be times on the weekend, I was like, I'm going to play this for three hours straight. I just kept playing the same level over and over mm. and over yeah, again. that was a fun one. Um, but, I, I had to do that play the same level again and again and i was always trying to figure it out like why do they see me and i don't see them and it mm-hmm. was a brightness on the monitor yes was the problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then one day oh this room is a little nook up there they're hiding from yeah. Yeah. yep yeah yep. and yeah you turn that brightness on because you're like there's this one part where you had to jump from a building to a wall or something yeah. like that and i was like well you know i was always just saying a prayer i hope i make it hope i make it and then eventually it's like oh turn the brightness up oh there it is i can just yep, there. Yep. i've been jumping in the wrong spot the whole damn time <laughs> um but uh and then eventually i uh i saved this money bought the the whole game and i just i love that game and uh for those of you who still play were you familiar with the code la postal i remember what? that one there was lawn lock uh was one Oh, I don't remember that one. What? But L.A. Postal. That's not okay somehow. Uh, In a shooting game. Basically, <laughs> full health, all the weapons, full mm-hmm. ammo. And I put it on a hotkey on a, on a joystick. So I was like, boom. <laughs> and, man, I love that game. And I, I would, I, it was uh, kind of free roaming in some, in some yeah. regard. And uh, I used to love the final level where you fight the... Uh, was it Dark Trooper or yeah. whatever it was? Like the Phase Three, I think. Yeah, he would only come at you once you entered that one little part of the um, of the of the the, the docking bay there, or mm. whatever it was. So I used to just lay mines across the whole mm. level, and then eventually I would then I go wake him up, and then I would just go hide in a corner, and you'd listen to him set off all the mines and kill himself. It was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then going to Tie Fighter. Mm. So Tie Fighter was not only fun but very educational. Uh, for me, introduced me to Thrawn. Mm-hmm. Um, I still love the voice he had in that video game over the voice in Rebels. Rebels. And you learn about all the ships. Like you learn what a frigate is, what a uh, dreadnought is. Um, you 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 learn how you have your Corvettes, your modified Corvettes, your Nebulon B frigates. The, the Nebulon frigates are medical based, and those modified Corvettes, man, those things are those things will fuck you up. Um, she was gonna love this one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the uh, and it was all the different ships you would fly with Vader. Sometimes you'd try to attack them, and they would actually like yell at you, like you shouldn't do that. Or <laughs> you know, Vader's like, "What are you a traitor now?" To Mm. And the better you got, you got all these awards and stuff. And I used to play that thing for hours. I couldn't stop. And and there'd be some missions that were damn near. You couldn't kill every... You couldn't blow up everything on every level. And I would do my best to just... I'm going to fly this level until everything's destroyed. And, man, that was such a good time. I used to get lost in space. That was always my thing. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm spinning the thing around. Like, where the fuck did everybody... <laughs> Why is it just me out here? I mean, do you guys play it, though? I mean, I just remember, like redirecting energy from the engines to the shields to charge up your guns and it was it was just wild stuff man you're actually flying like all these buttons 
to to get that chip to perform the way I he needed to. Was, I didn't have those games, but yeah. friends did, so that was the only time I really got to see it or mess with it. I do miss Lucas Arts as a a video game. You know, like just they. There's a lot of fun games that they made, like, uh, you know, Rogue. What was it, Rogue? Rebel Assault, or what was it? Yeah. The, yeah, like that was awesome, and the Clone Wars one was awesome, and like I don't know, I miss a lot of those, like just flying games or. Yeah. Last thing on that too is like, it told you where the shield generators were on a star destroyer, so like in Return of the Jedi, yeah, the two balls, balls so on sweet. top. So in Return of the Jedi, when they're like, take out that guy's shields, I was mm-hmm. like, oh wow, that is mm-hmm. the game is accurate to the movie and i was like oh wow so cool um so let's go over shadows of the empire did you play the video game yes did you get the book not till much later did you get the comic not till much later did you get the toys yes okay so you're you have my zizor i sold it to you yes or maybe i gave it to you and (laughs) (laughs) did you uh, were you the Thank second? You. Were you the second person that got the soundtrack before? I, I didn't even know there was one. Yes, hold it back. Um, so yeah, but it's still two, two out of five. Like I, we haven't. I don't think we've met a person that got a zero yet. You know, like that's. I feel like that is the big one. You know, like that EU, and it's not. It's far from the best mm-hmm. EU story. Um, it's probably pretty, pretty average. Yeah. The, you know? um, but. It the marketing of that thing worked somehow, yeah. Because it it like there's it didn't miss, you know, one of its fingers. Yeah. Did Re- we do we have a five or five? I don't think so. I feel like a Cause four even, four or fives. Yeah, I think there's a few fours. And I'm a four now. There there's all <laughs> there there's a bunch of stuff too. Like there there's other things that we don't really mention, but like you know it could really be like a ten of five, like you know some extra credit. Uh, getting the card set or, or things like that, right? Right. Big applause right, figures, right, but right. Like, mm, right. it's not the same. Yeah. It's just yeah. extra. It, it's um, I have a brother who's twelve years younger than me, so he had a Nintendo sixty four, and that's how we played the game. Basically, I bought it for him. I feel like one of you was poor, poor, poorly planned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, I'm not sure which one. It's an interesting dynamic. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, my mom's third, second marriage or whatever. Yeah, all oh, my got, brothers gotta... and sisters are half brothers and half sisters. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sort I'm of an same. only child, but kind of not. Yeah, that's oh. how I grew up too. Uh, uh, let's see. I remember that game. One thing I love that you talked about the train level, dude. IGID was that yep, was impossible. That, it was impossible, and he was on a big pile of trash. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of blended in with the trash. It was like I was like, where is this fucking yep. thing? And I, I just love that game. How he had the jetpack, so yep, I loved yep, just yep. flying everywhere. It was good stuff. I used to just do that in the level sometimes. Yep. Like I didn't play the game always. I was just kind of fucking around. Yeah, the Bounty yeah. Hunter game was good. Like I, f- I feel like anyway when I was a kid. That game was I remember it being a little difficult too. Yeah. A like lot just, of them were difficult. <laughs> well, you you have like too many enemies and if you didn't save like a like a missile from your jetpack like you kind of screwed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a prison break when you pick up Slave 1 and it was like the backstory for why he has that ship. Worst, let's do that. Let's play this game then worst Star Wars video game. Oh, there's, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> For sure. But which one comes? There's one that jumps right to the, my, it's, when I, as soon as I said it, I, like, it's like the, <laughs> for me. Oh, man. I'll I, tell you what mine is. It's the, the fucking Mortal Kombat one. Like, with the fighting Tara game. Scassi? Yes. I hated that thing. And it I, wasn't good. <laughs> that Jodo cast, though. That's cool. Yeah. I wanted to like it. But I was like, "This is not good," because I, I it, but it was caught up in the hype, which I was also caught up in Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, of uh, Killer Instinct, the, the one with the dinosaurs fighting each other, like Primal Rage. Primal Rage. I like, love that game. It was great, but like it got caught up in the in the wheelhouse of that, and then it didn't deliver. And you're like you're playing as a Gamorrean guard. <laughs> 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 Dumb. Yeah, I don't. I haven't subjected myself to any games of Star Wars that I didn't like. Fortunately, like, like I don't want to like discount a game just because I thought it was difficult. Um, like the NES Star Wars, that was not very easy to play. Like I never really. I remember I would get past the sand crawler, and then you like I don't remember beating Boba Fett was in the cantina for some reason, something like that. Uh, like that game, I never did well with, but it was fun. It was fun to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starfighter. 
Starfighter was a game that came out after Episode 1 on PlayStation 2. It was trash. It was a first-person view only, and that <laughs> blew my mind. And it, But it wasn't fun to play. Right. I and don't that's, remember that's, that one. That's coming off of um, uh, Rogue Squadron let me, on 64, it, it, which was, was so good. You know, let that me, game is gold. Let me try to find uh, Star, was it Star Wars Starfighter. Yeah. See if it brings back any kind of you, memory. I think you, you're playing as Addie Gallia from the Council. Oh, that's starting to sound more familiar. And then there was like a weird alien. He was green and it, he looked like Swamp Thing. Knock or something. It's a three letter name. Yeah, that's starting. Schnook. Schnook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's bringing back some memories. I'm going to have to watch some. I'm not sure if I had this. Oh, I did have this. And you're right, it did suck. <laughs> yeah, I recognize the cover. Yeah. I did have that. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Games, dark times. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that really kind of... We can always come back you. if anything all jumps right. out to you. Oh, you were talking about uh, Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. I remember reading about the whole gimmick with that. It was basically, I, I, hey, let's see if we can market... What was it? A, it was a test to see if we can... What it was a marketing... if we were going to do another movie? A marketing like test for... Episode one, ultimately. Like, oh, okay. What if we do this, 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 and that? It was pretty much successful. Like everybody knew about it one way or the other. And episode one wasn't too different. No. And they followed pretty much the same format. Yeah. They introduced a few new things, you know. Oh, they, like bad things, like uh, multiple covers for the novel. What the? F- yeah, Who yeah. Did yeah. it by Darth Maul. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, I definitely did. Um, and actually, I remember passing on the novel. Because the Darth Maul one was sold out, like in a store, I'll, I'll get it somewhere That's what else. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing about Shadows, I think that was the first Star Wars book I've ever read. I may no have read, shit. may have read the. See, that's the interesting. Trilogy. Oh, well, I read it, Neil, a long, long time ago too. But the fact that, like, you know, it was it was far from the first one that came out, but it's something about the hype beast of yeah. that thing, like. And uh, yeah, when I found out where how, how it takes place, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a gap that I have no idea what happened. Yeah. Uh, between uh, Han getting frozen and getting discovered, or yeah. rescued. But uh, one of the things I always remembered was uh, Prince Zizor, whatever his... Uh, Scissors is his name. Whatever, Lord, Lord Scissors. Whatever his race was, dude, that he emits pheromones to yes. turn yes. women on. That was, I was like, oh, well, that's wild shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's like the male poison ivy. <laughs> I really did <Yeah>. that. <laughs> yeah. And he was like trying to seduce Leia, I think, at one point. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, he gets a smooch. Does he? Yeah. Lay his little hootie patootie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, what about Phantom Menace? What do you, talk to me about the trailer. Talk to me about the first reactions. Um, so, you know, my memory—I don't know what I've done to mess up my brain, but some things I just don't remember at all. But I will tell you, I was in college, senior year, and me being the computer guy, my friends like, "It's on this web. You can go watch it here." Blah blah blah. Uh-huh. And uh, fortunately, we didn't have to worry about dial-up with like you guys had with downloading it all night. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Because uh, in in uh, University of Delaware, where I went, they were very technologically proficient on campus, so we had high-speed internet basically in our rooms. It was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I didn't have the internet until probably close to uh, Attack of the Clones, like okay. 2002 ish. You know, it was all like. I remember, like, my school, like, you have an email account. I'm like, well, I don't know how to use that. Like, you know. Like. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I I don't remember. I think at one point it was supposed to broadcast during a certain show. Um, but getting to the trailer specifically, um, I just watched it driving down here yesterday mm-hmm. <laughs> to your house because I knew this question was coming up. Yeah. And, yeah, it does start out with the Gungans walking through the fog. I was like, I don't think I felt any which way about it, but... I I do remember this. Of course, we haven't seen Star Wars in so long, and this trailer had like tons of stuff. You had your space battles. You had new Jedi. There's there's new. There, oh, that's right. There's going to be different Jedi. Mm-hmm. You know, in this. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's red and blue, and Darth Maul, dude. Uh, what's going on there? And um, 
But the one thing that is mentioned in that trailer, which I had forgotten, was Anakin introduces himself to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. And he says, hey, I'm Obi-Wan. Yeah. Totally forgot about that. So when the movie came on, that, that was like, oh, yeah. Obi-Wan, they're going to tell his story too? Yeah, Not yeah, just yeah, the yeah. Little yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that being like kind of a, a revelation as well. Like, oh, yeah, this isn't just about Anakin. This is- yeah, so, I mean, I just remember... Everyone was so excited to see it and just be able to go to that website and just watch it over and over again. And then, again, though, that was senior. When uh, that thing came out, what, six? When did the trailer probably teaser come out? Like a few months before or whatever? Sometime in 98, I guess. Oh, okay. But um, I just remember, I mean, senior year, I'm trying to get a job. You know, I, I was working part time at the same time. I, you know, Star Wars. All right, it's cool. When's it come around? 99? All right, I'll, I'll focus then. You know, at the same... I mean, because I was graduating right around the same time I was coming out, so I didn't put much focus on it. Again, I was also a retired high school jock that drank a lot and stuff like that as well, so... <laughs> what was your... Um, you know, it's funny, uh, real quick, like... It's not that I hate the internet. I'm happy we have it. I'm not a dinosaur... You know, it's not the devil, all that kind of stuff. But talking about it on the internet kind of takes some of the magic out of the world. <laughs> okay, baby, I'm coming. I'm coming. Um, but how, like, the internet kind of takes some of the magic out of the world where, like, I saw the trailer in the theater and I couldn't see it again until I, I caught it with another movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I just, what, what you just left wanting and wanting and wanting. Where now it's everything is so accessible where it's like, you don't know what it's like to want anymore, yep. which is a weird feeling, you know? Like, I mean, imagine living in a world, in a country where you can be like, you know what my biggest complaint is? I don't want enough. <laughs> 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 you know, it's a weird uh, dichotomy. Hold on one second. I don't know why I say hold on one second. Like, it's, like it's not going to be immediate for them. Like, they got to hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on to your right. butts. <laughs> So, episode one, mm-hmm. right? Finally, you get to go see it. I had a, a, a well, damn, mm. a tradition mm-hmm. of seeing it with my mom for some reason. Um, we started, they were they had re-released uh, the, the original trilogy, I think, leading up to that, right? In theaters? There were theaters. Yeah, the special editions. Yeah, I remember doing that. Which, which we can talk about as well. We kind of um, skip, over, we skip over them all the time by accident. But, uh, no, well, the only story I have to that was as I was uh, driving up from college to visit my mom that weekend, we were going to go see it. And um, I was running behind, and I just remember Interstate 78 going west. They had, like roads I run a road blocked off or something and I basically I pleaded with a police officer I was like can you please just let me jump the the lane from the express I, I drove a, an SUV at the time I love jumping over curbs but uh, <laughs> anyway <laughs> can you let me jump over from the you know the, the express lane to the local lane because I got to get home so I'm going to watch Star Wars with my mom and he was like <laughs> <laughs> and he's like He's like, all right, fine. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I remember really from that. But but getting to episode one, dude, opening scene when the the Jedi ambassadors are here or whatever, uh-huh. and Qui Gon goes, well, what does what, he say? Something. What does a Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> it's like this, like they're like, it's like the accent is so crazy. It's like like it's like. It's like, all right, as I can imagine George is like, okay, I want to like a very strong Japanese kind of American accent with a little bit of Israeli Brooklyn Jew on top of it. Like, it's like, you know, like, what is our Jedi doing here? It's like Bernie Sanders as an Asian with fucking makeup on. <laughs> um, I just remember they're in the conference room or whatever, and uh, Qui-Gon, I forget what he says, he's like, is he like, calm your anxieties, Obi-Wan? And he's like, Obi Wan, I was like, "That's Obi Wan." I just that they it gripped me mm. right away. So I don't know if it's the the nostalgic feels or the fan service or whatever to that particular point. But and then of course they have something that looks like C three PO walk through the door yeah, yeah. immediately after, so they kind of grab you. But, and a lightsaber through the door. 
Like that was the one for me where it was like like there the 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 amount of new information that you're exposed to very quickly in that mm-hmm. film, the lightsaber through the door, the super speed that they use yep. and then never use again. <laughs> Join the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like it's like it's, I, I imagine like Qui Gon and Obi Wan having this discussion like when they're about like you know when Obi Wan's about ten and him and Qui Gon saying. Obi Wan, we can also travel at super speed, but we can only do it once. <laughs> so choose it wisely. <laughs> Wouldn't be a good time for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, fighting inside a giant reactor. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> They're not the last as long against the drug, the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they sound like, you know. Oh man! And then of course. You- they're wielding the lightsabers in a way we've never seen them. I mean, yeah. original trilogy, it's all very clunky. Uh, when Luke is deflecting blaster bolts from a speeder on Endor, I'm like, wow, Luke got lucky quite a few times there deflecting them. But like here, it's like art. They're they're hitting them back like like they're playing baseball. Yeah. Just, dude, really just loved it. You know, while I'm on the, that, the kind of thinking about that, a lot of people don't remember, but like there was a lot of controversy surrounding episode one and some of the decisions it made kind of racially and, and things like that, that was like in the ether. But it, like, if it was today, I mean, it would be at, you know, it, it cancel culture. Like I remember like saying how like, you know, that the, the, the Asian accents for the Nimodians were a little too Asian. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's like an impression of an Asian accent. And going forward, all the Nimodians that they did introduce, they didn't use that accent anymore. Yes, correct. Very different voices. Watto, like, they're, like all of the, like, because all of the kind of things they were saying about Watto and what Lucas was trying to say with Watto. And, you know, like, there was a lot of that out there. There was even talk of, like, Jar Jar supposedly supposedly being some sort of homosexual character that they like initially you know like but i remember reading that in different places but like nobody remembers it because it was like you know the the small bullshit blog or whatever here Mm -hmm. but it it, you know it wasn't in your suggestions on youtube every time you fucking got on right and no one wanted to talk about that shit anyway back then i agree so what i agree yeah yeah like let's move on (laughs) yeah dude i Uh. There's something, there's something about, I feel like in 50 years they're going to look back on you know our exposure to the internet and sociologically we weren't ready you know for right. for what it became but uh you know it ended up tearing us apart you know it ended up also being able to order food and bring it to our house which is awesome right. but also tearing us apart yeah it's uh it's I mean there was no social justice warriors really before that or Maybe there were. They just didn't have a platform to stand on to reach so many people. I don't know. It, but at the same well, time, there wasn't as much of the, like, I agree with you. But I also think, like, the, you know, Stormtroopers aren't black. You know, that whole shit mm-hmm. that started on Twitter when, when Finn was seen in the Stormtrooper armor. Dude, I miss all of that. You know, like, there know. there was none of that. Like, there there was some of it, I'm sure, just like there was some on mm-hmm. the other side, but it was like, it, it it really did represent the portion of the population that thinks about those sorts of things, which was to say minuscule, you know? Yeah, it's just wild. Most people find themselves somewhere in the middle of everything, you know, but we don't give a fuck about the pendulum swing anymore. We want to pick a side, bury our fucking head in it, and fucking, like, die on the hill for every fucking little thing, yeah. you know? It drives me nuts. Uh, and then, so, I mean, the movie, I'm, I'm not going to... The, the bad parts to me, I just, I remember, I think I, I definitely saw it three times in the theater. Um, a couple times on my own. Uh, the, everything was cool about it, except for, you know, obviously the, the kid flying around, saving the day in his starship. Yippee! Um, <laughs> and to be honest, Jar Jar didn't bother me that much. Uh, I mean, he was just there contributing to more, uh, interesting scenes anyway mm. so he's just kind of on the wall being stupid didn't really bug me dude when anakin talks to Saboba, i hate that shit so much <laughs> it's like nails on a chalkboard to me i'm like oh my god dude i just want to i don't want to hurt any children but I mean, I want to hurt that kid sometimes. I mean, watching that movie the first few times again, it's it's world building and stuff, and you're seeing you know a different part of Tatooine. Like, wow, this is where Luke grew up and kind of thing. And 
So like all that stuff didn't bother me until much later when I can watch these things whenever I want. And then it's like, oh, God, here's the part that, you know, I don't care about anymore because I've already gotten what I need out of those scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the pod racing video game. Do you guys? Have I loved that? it. Yeah, dude. I loved it. I still. And you I, could be my boy, Ben Quadineros. <laughs> Gascano. <laughs> You're a guest counter guy for sure. I loved it too. I had a, a bootleg copy that I had for my PC, believe it or not. And uh, I used on the PC, it was the graphics were much better. It was is more responsive than playing it on N64. Mm. And I would play that game all the damn time too. And there's a line in there where you have to like fix your pod like during the race. And Anakin goes, "It's working, it's working." I still say that to myself. Sometimes. <laughs> I, I do too. It's working, it's working. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. Like that too. if I'm trying to fix a computer yep. or something, like, "Oh, yep. it's working, it's yep. working." For sure. Anyway, I just want to toss that in there. So, how did you feel? What, what would you say you ranked episode one? Like, you know, out of ten, do you, or how did you feel about it when you walked out of it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, dude, me too. And yeah, it's a simpler time, man. Yeah. So funny, you could walk like so many people we talked to walk out of episode one loving it, you know what I mean? Like, and it's like, you know, that movie is well, I remember this now too, watching it the first time with my mom. Uh, do 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 the ambassadors, where are the ambassadors? I don't know. Uh, the the queen's in her throne room, and oh, uh, what is it? We have we have Senator Palpatine on the line, and I remember, of course, I had read years ago, right, 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 Barnes and Noble. I was like, Palpatine, interesting. Mm. And my mom goes, what? Who is that? I'm like, shh, maybe we'll find out at the end. Because <laughs> obviously we know the story of Darth Vader growing right. up. Now there's like, I'm going to learn how Obi-Wan matured and, and grew up. I'm going to learn now where the Emperor came from. I wasn't expecting any of this. Right. So I think that's another reason why I really like that movie a lot. Yeah, the... Um... I remember walking out of that movie with my dad. I, I took him to see it, you know, afterward, and he was like, "What in the hell was that?" Like, you know, he like he was like way ahead of the curve. Like, that wasn't any good. Like, like, like and I was like, "What? You didn't love it? It's, are you nuts?" You know, he was like, "No, I was like, I got the frog guy walking around. He doesn't know what he's doing. The fucking idiot." Like, um. So, what about episode two? Episode two, uh. You know, I, I probably liked it less um, coming out of the theater. Hmm. Uh, but again, the they're introducing another. Who's this guy dressed up like Boba Fett? That's not Boba Fett, you know. So again, that was kind of interesting. He had the same ship um, that Boba Fett had, yep. and clones. So I had, I remember, I had some family have some family in Houston they had talked about clones they had read about clone wars and the novels and all that other stuff and uh so I was really interested in this obviously they look like stormtroopers are we gonna are these what stormtroopers actually are so again just the fact finding part of it the the filling in the gaps of things that I've heard for previous years to come uh before this movie it's like oh you know I, I just love the expansion I love the fact that it was uh Yoda was not a puppet anymore. I'm a puppet. <laughs> what? You put your tongue to mine. What is? <laughs> so I've heard you say this so often. I don't know what that is. Hold on one second. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anybody out there that's also confused, it's just look up Thumb Wars. Uh, it's great. Step one. <laughs> put your tongue to mine. Um. Okay. So. Heavy, heavy Kenobi movie, mm-hmm. which was which was really nice. There's uh, Kenobi, uh, which I guess I forgot to mention in the in the talking about Phantom Menace. All of a sudden, is becoming my favorite Star Wars character. Uh, we'll, we'll get to him talked about Revenge of the Sith, but I want to revisit his uh, talk with Luke in his hut in Episode Four. But yeah. um, so that's really cool going on. They're sending Jedi's on mission, do this investigative work, uh, you know. And, and um, we also see now that uh, Anakin is what ten years older. What do, no? What was it, what's the gap between ten? Those? Ten, ten. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's interesting to see them starting to build this relationship with with Kenobi and Anakin. 
because again, in episode four, he's like he was a good friend. So the teen angst again. I think I saw this movie with my mom as well, mm. and she's like, oh, "Fucking teenagers!" You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she, what was it? Uh, he's holding me back. It's all his fault. Yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. God, whine and bitch, bitch and moan. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was like, I, was like, I distinctly remember mom saying those things to me when I was a teenager too. Like, get your head out of your ass. Yeah. Stop complaining. But uh, I have to say the uh, the romantic interlude uh, portions of that movie, probably not. Not the best. But I, I didn't feel creeped out like a lot of people did. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, you know, I don't know about you guys growing up, but there's always that somebody that you kind of had a crush on and you never quite sure how to make it work or if it would ever work. And yeah. I was like, he's he's doing it. He's he's trying. He's trying <laughs> to get this girl. He's really, really trying. And um, so I guess it works out for him in the end. But it was, I mean, I like their playful banter on uh, Geonosis, mm. you know, with the, ah. Oh. Negotiations with a lightsaber, right, know, right, stuff right, stuff like that. Um, the uh, his his uh, trip to the dark side with the native Tatooiners, yes, yes, fantastic stuff. Like that's the kind of character building that I wanted to see. Because after, he, I mean, I know he's a kid, and I know he's struggling, and I know he's angry, and I know he's impatient. But what what's really gonna send him? Start sending them down that path. That music in that scene too is very like Saturday morning serial. Like you know when she dies and he's like, and like and he's losing his mind and it all kind of works well, you know. Uh, and I still wish he would have gone back and killed Watto. Like just, I don't know. I like a murderous Anakin. Like I just want the body count to be insane. You know, like I, I, you know, like, I just wanted to be like, like every planet he leaves, it's just like a pile of people behind mm-hmm. him, like stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Um, like every planet that he encounters, one hundred percent within the next hundred years, builds a museum to memorialize Anakin's involvement in that area. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's that's how I view that character. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a museum of the path of destruction that he leaves behind. Yeah, like wake. never forget Skywalker uh-huh. attack. Yeah. You know, one of the nice things too about these prequels is I think like almost every movie gives the fan their orgasm moment. Mm-hmm. You know, things you've always wanted to see, but are not sure if you'd ever be able to see it. I agree with that. You, you get the arena and you know, this party's over and all of a sudden you see them all starting to light up all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. This is going to yeah. be great. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought they would be better at this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's true, too. Um, but everybody's favorite <laughs> orgasmic moment is obviously the... Oh. Right? Oh. Right? The Yoda scream. And the, and, the, and the fight. How did that strike you? How did that sit with you the first time? So, I had no idea what to expect mm-hmm. with this. Uh, like, I wasn't sure if... if uh, I think there was a subtle hint... Uh, does Obi Wan say that Anakin's like you'd rival Yoda as a swordsman? Swordsman. Uh, somebody says it, and it's like only in your mind. Obi right. Wan says it, like yeah. it's back to him. He's like, I, I think I is it Anakin saying I ri- I would rival Yoda as a swordsman? It's like only in your mind. Yeah, I forget I forget the exact lingo of it, but Something it's like it's that. it's Yoda. It's Obi Wan correcting the person, assuming that they're anywhere near Yoda. Right. So anyway, but that of course that was a seed planted an hour and a half ago right. when you're watching this. I love how things kind of surprise you mm. like that. But um like oh yeah, I forgot about that other character. Uh but uh so I didn't know what to expect. So there Yoda absorbs lightning and puts it in his pocket. Uh <laughs> never <true. laughs> I mean, we hadn't seen Force Lightning since... It's the equivalent Jedi. of a Jedi kiss blown. Yeah. Like, and you take it and you put that <laughs> in your... <laughs> uh, and then he... All right, talk about crappy dialogue, right? He's like, so uh, this can't be decided by our power with the Force. We're going we're gonna to have to use a lightsaber. lightsaber. And I'm like, yeah, this is some, some clunky stuff. <laughs> And 
Yeah, and then Yoda just drops the cane, or no, I think he had already dropped it or whatever, but dude, my mom pointed this out. Mm. uh, Like, after we saw the movie, she was like, and he didn't reach for it. He used the force and grabbed Mm -hmm. the lightsaber from his belt. Yeah, that's so hard. um, So, all right. It's a flex. So, so Yoda... (laughs) You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, very you know, definitely. So Yoda. All right. He's he's fighting with a lightsaber. So the yell. <laughs> <laughs> and then a velociraptor also comes in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't think I don't think I feel sir, any way about it when I first saw <laughs> me, it. Me I was like. All right. Well, it is what it is. He's actually made me hate it. Now I see it, and I'm like, oh, it is goofy. But like, I never really paid any attention to it before. But <laughs> the, the the hippity hoppity stuff. Um, so a lot of times when you see choreographed, you sound like so- a racist from the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All that hippity hoppity. <laughs> so choreographed sword fighting in movies. A lot of times. You see, all they're doing is touching. They're touching the blades. They're, uh-huh. not, they're not trying to, to right. kill the person. Mm-hmm. And Yoda's fighting style, it's almost like, is it simply just to tire out the other guy? Because he's <laughs> all he's doing is spinning around so that their blades can touch. <laughs> touch your blade to mine. <laughs> I mean, that's all it is. I mean, he's not trying to cut off Dooku's hand or leg or, or, mm-hmm. or beat him in the fight. All he's doing is like, I'll just keep touching your blade and spin around and... I guess it's just, just to frustrate the guy on the other side. Like, it's like fighting IG-88 in Shadows of the Empire. I so. view it almost as like, uh, I, I totally get where you're coming from. But I view it, I guess the way I fan it away, so mm-hmm. to speak, is like, it's like Yoda style is it puts you 100% on defense. There's no way to be offensive. Right. You know, so it's like somebody throwing a, a thousand fucking like circular saws with ra- you know, jagged teeth at you and you just have to kind of you know, make your way, and yeah. you know, um, but you know, I, I like that. It's funny because I think that it's funny. I think two, five, and eight were the most divisive Star Wars films ever released, and they're all the middle pieces, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. that's the formula, that's the formula, you know. And, and that scene to me, I remember walking out of the theater, and everybody, you know, I've had this too with Star Wars, dude, where walking out of the theater, everybody feels one way, and then two weeks later, it's completely different, Mm -hmm. you know? I remember walking out of two, and everybody was like, the Yoda lightsaber, Mm -hmm. like, oh my God. And then, like, two weeks later, I was like, man, actually, that might be dumb. (laughs) I've been thinking about it. That might be dumb, you know? And and I've noticed that a lot with Star Wars. You know, I remember walking out of The Last Jedi. You know, here and for the most part, everybody was like, "Man, I, I, it was," good. and then like, and then it started to seep in. Yep. You know, and it's like, it's, it's so it's so interesting to me. I mean, even Adam, who ended up kind of hating it, you know, when he walked out of it, he was like, "Man, I don't know what to think." You, you know, but like, that's the challenging aspect of that movie that mm-hmm. I that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after he digested, then it was like, "No, I'm on the other side of this." Yeah. But it wasn't this visceral. Right, you know. Uh, continue, uh, and just the other thing is uh, before Yoda, of course, comes in and and takes care of business, so to speak, or maybe not even so to speak, but uh, well, does he really take care of business now? He just no, no. unfortunately, no. Yeah, the dark side they they got him that time. But uh, Anakin just... picks up a second lightsaber and do dual wielding against Dooku with the red and the blue. Yeah, the, the green, green and the blue. blue. That was really awesome and. We see Anakin lose a limb in that movie, and mm-hmm. I was I was starting to get confused again. Harkening back, I'm like, no, he got all fucked up in the volcano, right, right, so, right. So, uh, like, that's another thing for me. I'm like, so how how's this play out now? So, how much of him is more machine than man? You know, so I'm not exactly sure what's what's happening. So I was kind of curious to see what's, how they're going to take that in the next movie. Side note, I do like how in the sequel trilogy they didn't lose any limbs. Because like because like it, it it stops the joke, mm-hmm. you know the joke being like oh well, you, oh Star Wars you mean the limb loss wars like you know like it stops that joke like nope nope you know I like that, um, so how did you how, you 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 didn't feel as strongly about this one walking out of it as you did walking out of Episode One, uh, how do you feel about that movie now? 
Uh, it's it's probably not my favorite, but it's not it's not dead last. Mm. Um, what is dead last? I, I prob, prob, probably, oh, you know what? It might be dead last. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that, that's another one of those divisive movies. It's Chris Pinkerton's favorite Star Wars yeah. film. You know, like, it, and it's, it's not my favorite, but it's it's not my least favorite. Yeah, because yeah. I was about to say, oh, Phantom Menace is last. I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's not. Not for me, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And... Last Jedi is not my favorite, but it's not last right. either. Maybe it should be. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, again, the, I, you know what? Yeah. I'm, now that I, I think I want to go watch this movie again. I'm starting. I want to go see Two? that arena scene. Yeah. yeah and, but what you just said, you want to see that scene. Yeah. You have to watch a lot more to get there. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I just forgot about that part. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, I watched it not that long ago, and it went to being my bottom. It bumped Rogue One up. Really? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. You know, it's what Rogue I. Horrible. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> you know, and that movie's mostly beloved. I just uh, fell asleep in it in the movie theater. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's my wife's favorite anymore because she really liked not Nine, but uh, but yeah, it's up there for her. It's my top three mm-hmm. for sure. But the um, what was I gonna say? Oh, the, the bumping it to the bottom and oh, uh, to to extrapolate upon what we were talking about last night, saying that like uh, you know, the Skywalker is like a nine point five. Or I mean, five point five out of ten for me, and Phantom Menace is probably like a two or a three out of ten for me. But what people don't understand is that on the Star Wars scale, a two probably beats. Anything below, like seven or mm-hmm. below, for most films, for me, you know what I mean. It's like it's it's a different sliding scale. Because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I would still rather watch Phantom Menace than like probably seventy percent of all media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. All right, moving on to episode three. Yeah, let's do okay, it. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, what, let me ask you this: Are you in that boat at that time of I need this film to oh. fix this trilogy? Because that was a thing. So, all right. So now that I remember my feeling about Attack of the Clones, uh, not enough was done. I think at the end of that movie, I'm like, oh, they just introduced this clone stuff. I mean, all right, Anakin's lost one limb so far, but dude, we gotta get moving here because him and him and Obi Wan yeah. are at odds, and in. In the New Hope, he goes. He was a good friend, so a lot's got to take yep. transpire here. And I don't know how long these movies are apart from each other. Uh, three, uh, three years. Like as soon as two and three, right? But as soon as that movie ends, I'm like, how far? How long? Oh, you know what? They didn't tell us in nine. How long ago? No, but I did read that two, s- two years. Nine, nine and eight. It's two. Years oh, ago. really? Okay. Because I was expecting to read that in the crawl. All right. I digress. But the anyway, dead speak. You think they would a... give you valuable information in a crawl? Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm like, how much time is going to take place? I don't know. They got a lot of work to do here. Um, and, and I think that was kind of my disappointment. I was like, you know, I, I was like, we know the end game for that one. We know what has to happen. So only one movie left yeah that was that i think that was the only kind of major disappointment i had there it wasn't enough meat on the bone after that i still to this day think that episode one should have ended where episode two ended episode two should have been called the clone wars mm. and then we should have got episode three closing it out episode two should have well not specifically everything in it but the general concept should have been one we don't. We don't need to see Anakin as a little boy. I don't. Right. Think we really. Yes. Need to no. See I agree. Him. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Like you could have had passing dialogue to know that he was taken from his mother and things like that. Like if you want to put her in there, and I think that she's important to the character too. Yeah, for sure. So I think we talked about that in the car. Uh, the car ride down here, maybe. Or I, I talk so much Star Wars. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but, but but I but I always felt Episode One could have been Anakin and Obi Wan, their buddies, and. They go on that mission, like if Anakin and Obi-Wan replaced what is Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan in episode one, and there is no kid on Tatooine or the pod race, but, you know, he falls in love with the princess as he has to protect her, right. or, or queen, queen, 
but that would have been a great starting point. It, it gets like um, – I remember walking out of episode one, my buddy Troy, who's insane, completely insane. But he, like, looked over – like every. Those are the best stories. <laughs> Everybody's always everybody was talking about how much they loved it, how much like oh man, and the lightsaber fight and Darth Maul looks like Satan and that's cool and all this stuff. And then my and then my buddy Troy just looked at him and was like, "Hey, is she gonna fuck that little boy?" <laughs> 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 and then I was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Well, that's hard." <laughs> <laughs> all right. So episode three, my mm-hmm. one of the things I made they had uh, we had the Samurai Jack uh, Clone yeah, Wars yep. series right yep. at that point. I remember trying to stake out Cartoon Network uh-huh, to find yeah, out yeah. when it comes yeah. on because there were like three minute episodes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and for the ones that I did catch, it, it there was nothing really there from a relationship building between Obi Wan and Kenobi, if I remember correctly. Obi Wan and Obi Wan and Anakin. Pardon me. They were they were separated. Right. And he goes off and chases a size Ventress against orders. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and other than that, it was just one shot, cool shit, introducing certain characters. And yeah. Things. Mace Windu's episode was fucking nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I that, like that. He was like Superman. That was nuts. Yeah. But anyway, my concern in this movie is, is I'm like, these two guys, they got to be friends and in order to make this fight on the volcano that I read about at Barnes & Noble mean something. <laughs> and... <laughs> The validation of Barnes and Noble yes. is the name of this episode. <laughs> Something um, like that. So I'm like, how are they going to do this? Opening scene. Okay, so this opening scene to this movie, space battle. That was fantastic. Mm. That was that could have been on that could have been battleships on water, but instead yeah. it was in space. I was completely blown away. And then in the first few lines of dialogue, immediately I'm like, all right. They they've they've got the banter. They they're establishing that relationship that we didn't we weren't able to see. They're friends. Like these guys are buddies. They've been through thick and thin. This is where the fun begins. Yes, and I'm, <laughs> dude, and the, the <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and that just gave me a nice warm feeling because all the way from going through the dogfight and the the. The buzz droids to them joking around. I got a bad feeling about this. Crashing into the thing, rescuing the Chancellor, uh, fighting Grievous, and and all that stuff. Uh, what is it? Ten minutes less? Eight minutes? That that all of that? I mean, mm-hmm. it goes by so quickly. But they established that really, really well. Um, I mean, and then and then of course when they when they get off the the ship that crash lands, it's like oh no. This is uh, this is your day, to, so uh, to uh, you know talk to the Senate people and all that stuff. Go yeah, have yeah, fun. yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, they've established it so well. Yeah, so much of the prequels is, is information is established by just calling something what it is. <laughs> like, it's, droid the cars, master destroyers, <laughs> ah. Buzz droids, am I right? Like, who does that? And like, they're, like, like, if you're like, yeah. if you're like walking down, like, if a cat cross your path, you're not like cat. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I, I like that movie a lot. I mean, I love the fact that they got that established, and so, and then all of a sudden, they toss it in. Oh, I'm pregnant. I was like, huh, okay, so. I was curious about that timeline as well. Do you like, think they had good sex? I'm going to say not a chance. <laughs> not <laughs> a they, chance. I'm sure they did. I can't. I can't see it. It has to be secret. It. it has to be like kept away and all that stuff. That adds a level of it can, excitement to it. It can, but I just feel like old Stone Face Anakin was in there, like yeah. <laughs> Stone Face <laughs> Mannequin Skywalker. I mean, he's pretty passionate as a whole about whatever he, what he's saying and, and things of that nature. I would think that he would show at least some. Mm. That's the one thing that he wants, the one thing he desires. As Padme, well. I'm quite enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more like other characters than that. Oh. Um, yeah. So throw it back for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so one of the things is I was kind of curious how. Like, I wasn't sure if Luke and Leia were going to be born already or, you know, and all that other stuff. Like, they, did that happen? They could between? have been. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I was, I was, so that was another question answered. Um, Actually, would that have been better? 
Would that have been better? Like, because I, I often think about Leia saying like she remembered her mother, like yeah, she was I don't beautiful, like that. you know. But it's like you, st- yeah, like you saw her in, for like a second. You know what I mean? Like she said your name and died. You know, like, um, it, like one one of the comics has like a statue of Leia on Alderaan uh-huh. or not uh, on oh, the dollar. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like that's what she knows. Yeah, like she she knows she's adopted. Yeah, but it's like, oh okay, yeah. But it's like it's 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 uh, I wonder if that would to have like to imagine Vader having time with his children yeah. when he was like that adds a whole level of complexity mm-hmm. to that character that they may be they may be missed out on right you know yeah yeah I mean because because the other thing too is okay they're all chummy here in the beginning I mean the funny thing about Star Wars movies is like they all happen within like a couple days right. <laughs> a new mm-hmm. hope you think about it I'm like yeah. well yeah, I know they're all wearing the same clothes I mean but I mean that whole movie takes place in what a day and a half no they're yeah. all no. like earnest where their closet is just full of the exact same <laughs> outfit so I'm like yeah. I'm like alright so he's got I mean these guys I mean in a matter so I'm like in a matter of a couple of days these guys are probably gonna end up you know really pissed off at each other and things but uh, so but back to to her being pregnant again, like I wasn't sure. I'm like, okay, so is there going to be a time jump in this movie at a certain point? Like, are these kids going to be born in the middle and then we're going to see? I don't know. But anyway, it, we ended up getting what we got. But the main part of that movie that really reaches out to me is um, the last time Obi Wan and Anakin see each other. And uh, Obi Wan's about to go to. The, the planet with the holes in it where Grievous is. I can't think of it. Utapau. Utapau. And what, what's the exchange? I mean, Anakin, he's obviously, he's getting a little torn up with these dreams. He's having a Padme and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, Master, I haven't been appreciative of your teachings. And, and Obi-Wan's just like, be patient. You know, you are going to end up. Becoming, you're Jordan. You're going to be Jordan. Yeah. You're going to be a, a better Jedi than I could ever hope to be. And dude, and they're like, May the force be with you, and may the force be with you, Master. Oh man, it's and then next thing you know, I look. I don't want to hear any more about Obi Wan, which yeah. is one of my favorite lines in that whole yep. trilogy. Like, like when you just you you've made a decision about a dude, and look, I don't want to hear any more about this yeah. guy. Like yeah. I've you know, and Obi Wan's like, hey, so long, my friend. And I was just like, when you watch the movie for the first time, you're like, oh, that's that's it. Yeah, something. The change happens next. Yeah. Oh, and then that's again what brings out a new hope. That that conversation he has with Luke and a new hope, like that's that's my next big collection display project. Um, reaching out to some friends of my, of ours, <laughs> I want a diorama. It's like the mafia of, of Obi Wan's hut. <laughs> friend of and, mine, friend of ours, and uh, with him and Luke and C three O and R two D two sitting in there having that conversation. That. I, that is just so poignant for me now. Yeah, uh, the the it was funny. One of my after walking out of episode three with Adam, uh, opening night, I remember both of us were like, we have to watch four immediately because mm-hmm. everything seems different after that movie. When he walks onto the ship, it seems different. Mm-hmm. When he, Obi Wan meets Luke, it's different. When it all has a completely different vibe after three. Yep. Yeah, and. So did it fix any of your, did it fix all of your, you know, whatever the issues you had with two as kind of yeah. minor as they may have been in the all, in yeah. the bigger picture? I mean, but... it, was a, it, was a, it was a crazy ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, and, 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 they, and they wrap it all up rather, rather nicely. Yeah, uh, uh, I agree. We, I mean, they have to put Vader in the costume. They just have to. But that was a little rushed. But they had to, I mean, that's something they just had to do. The editing of three from... The time that Obi Wan lands on Mustafar and Yoda walks into the senator chambers, the editing in that film from that point to the end, cutting back between the fights, 
cutting between the death and the death of Anakin kind of and the death of Amidala and all of that happening at the same time and while new things are being built babies are being passed off the Death Star is being built like that's probably the tightest editing done mm-hmm. in any Star Wars film like it's beautiful yep. I've come to appreciate editing a lot more with the more movies that I've seen and you know listening to people talk about them it's like you can tell it's like uh, looking at specific fight scenes, sometimes it's the editing that makes them quick. And if it's not, it's like, oh, God, if you're just filming a fight scene, they are slow. I mean, the way these people punch each other and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's, you get a better appreciation of all the people that, that uh, work on these movies. Um, but uh, again, uh, you know, the, I think someone else called it out uh, on one of a previous episode of Force Sensitive, but I don't like heavy dialogue movies and we get that a lot in today's age i don't know if there's a new contract now where people have to say a certain number of lines in movies but they're just (laughs) making people talk way too much and narrate the movie for me lucas gets criticism for his dialogue but i love the fact that there's not a lot of dialogue i think some of these movies must be written on like 15 pages they could probably fit all the dialogue (laughs) on you know there's not a lot to memorize well let me ask you this in a wider view, like, so how do you feel about movies that are dialogue driven, uh, but are kind of praised as that being their, their wishbone almost like, like a, like a Pulp Fiction or, a, um, you know what I mean? Like that's what I had in my head. Yeah. A movie that pretty much yeah. survives on its dialogue mm-hmm. and, and is, you know, almost quoted probably every day on this, right. on this planet. It's well, quoted. Somebody's quoting Pulp Fiction at some point. I, well, I guess I should, I should backtrack and say, I don't, I don't need the, I don't need the characters narrating what I'm watching. Okay. Me. Okay. The expo- exposition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like I can figure this out for myself. No, let I'm with the, you. Let the music set the tone. Let the scene set the tone. I'm with you there. 100%. And what I'm getting at is, I maybe it was on Nerve Rage, the the scene where Anakin and Padme are looking across course oh, at each other. Dude. I mean, no words. I love are, that shit. No words are said. And and they're not necessary. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just. Great. And, and, you know, New Hope is, is also, again, not very dialed. You don't have to be talking all the time to tell me what's happening. I just let, let the music do that. Yep, um, I agree. I'm with you there. And, uh, you know, that's just the only other thing I really wanted to mention about that. That scene is beautiful. Yeah. And, and she's crying and he, he's, you know, he, he knows where he's headed. And you know. for your diorama, for your your console chamber. Uh-huh. I had to, I rewatched that scene so many times trying to get the screen grabs of like, is this oh, yeah. what I should grab? <laughs> I must have watched it like 20 times yeah. trying to get the right screenshot. I still have like that, that single pack that you sent me, I've used for like a, th- like I feel like a thousand things and I still have like so much ammunition yeah. left over. Um, so, uh, okay. So the, the prequels are concluded and you're feeling good about it you're still passionate about it we we move on and we have the clone wars did you d- dive into that at all during that time um i i did uh i actually own a lot of them on regular dvd as well it's like after every season i would get it i think i think i'm missing the last two so much for that collection I just <laughs> dump it in jcc um but uh i do want to say that's after episode three is when i started reading star wars novels hmm uh labyrinth of evil um that's a good one it's yeah. a fun one yeah yeah uh i think rogue planet or something like that not my favorite but uh darth maul saboteur yeah um, i read that one too it's not very good either i think it's lord vader or the rise of lord vader or yeah something like that yeah um, that one. so but the only i only really wanted to start dark with, lord the rise of darth vader yeah i'm just <laughs> um oh yeah <laughs> I just wanted to get those gaps filled in, um, and the Clone Wars obviously do a lot of that. And that was really my main interest, filling in the the time between all the movies that I've seen. I never really read anything post-Jedi. Actually, I never read anything post-Jedi. Clone Wars EU, between the comics, the novels, the cartoon, the, all that, is the most effective the EU has ever been. Mm-hmm. To, to still to this day yeah. like it it did its job and i, I read I, I think i've mentioned this before but i can't remember if i've mentioned it or if in my head i keep meaning to mention it but lucas had said that his his intent was for the three years because clone wars take about three years between the comics and the novels and the video games or whatever that the fans would be experiencing the, the clone wars in real time mm-hmm. and that was his mission like I'm not sure how effective mm-hmm. that was for for most people, and I'm not even sure if I realized it 
taking in that media at that time, but it is fucking interesting, yeah. you know, yeah. an interesting way to present that material. Yeah, like it all comes to a close right as episode three was coming out, and yeah. then the last story arc is an Order 66 thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah before yeah. they move into um, Dark Times book. Right. Which I think did come a couple of years later, too. And and again, my main focus is I want to read more and more about this friendship between Obi Wan and Anakin. I I don't know why I've grasped onto that. That's one of the things I love most about Star Wars. But any book that had them two on a mission, that's what I wanted to read. I even started getting like these little junior readers. The books are like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, small, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like I would just breeze through them in an afternoon. It was like eight books. They were so small. I mean, large print, but no pictures or anything. But mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't get enough of it. And uh, there is this, my favorite book, which I can hardly remember any of it, which is kind of strange, is Outbound Flight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Zahn book. Yep. It is. Well, it's weird because that's a prequel to the Zahn, like, to yeah, the Zahn's right, trilogy. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, like, I think Thrawn is in it. But yeah. I love the fact, because I remember TIE Fighter, I know what a Corvette is now or whatever, or a <laughs> Dreadnought, and it's like, wow, they they put them all into a big giant ring, and it's kind of wild looking. But uh, What did you think of the Disney buyout? When that news came, when that news came, I was like, "Go, George Lucas, dude! Four point nine billion, good job, man." <laughs> so I felt that way yeah. too until I saw that Samuel Jackson interview, and he was like, "He got robbed," mm. and they're like, four billion dollars is a lot of money." And my man looked at the camera and said, "To some." Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 well, he turned the gold mine out of it. Didn't no one like it or want to give it a chance? To no, pay that yeah. Stuff, so, because I mean, could you imagine if that shit hit your desk like Wookies and Jawas and what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So that was my immediate reaction was George, dude. I and mean, and then he just t- gave it away. Yeah. You know, he yeah. just took the four billion and gave it away. <laughs> was, <laughs> well, he tried not to give it away. He wanted to put yeah. his own opinion. But well, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean the money. He, oh, he like literally. put it like to charity and shit. Like he just like he didn't he didn't his main goal with selling Lucasfilm was to keep the employees at Lucasfilm employed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They he wasn't going to make any more Star Wars films, and he knew that the company wouldn't survive without the constant the Star Wars income right. coming in. So he sold it to keep them employed, which is kind of like he that, that's my thing. Like I think he's a complete lunatic. But he's but he's kind of a a Hollywood hero. Like he bucked yes, the system. He yes. did what he wanted to do. He took care of his people. Like he, he's a, he's like that's what I why I find him inspiring. Yeah, me too. And it's all it was all like he created this whole thing. I mean, you look at filmmakers, you know, like oh here's a script. Yeah, sure, I'll direct that movie kind of stuff. No, it's like he built this thing off a whim. He's like, yeah, let's see if it takes. And then he just. Dude, the getting the franchise, the franchise, the merchandise rights to do it. And, yeah, you know, that was it, smart. It's he, he's a trendsetter. Uh, yeah, he for sure. Broke the mold on for this sure. stuff, and I saw your plug too. That was well done. Yeah. Also, credits. Didn't <laughs> yeah. he also break and do that? Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the <clears throat> he had yeah. to pay fines. Yeah, he and got stuff. he got kicked out of the directors guild yeah. and all sorts of shit. Um, you know, like, but he was like, I don't give a shit. This is what I want like, to do. It's, 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 it's going to ruin my movie if yeah. I put this in the yeah, beginning. It's always yeah. been his style. Like it's the same. Like Clone Wars. Like he, he like it drained Lucasfilm of money. Like it was losing money left and right. But he was like, well, what, what am I going to do? Make it bad? Yeah. No, we're going to make it good. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't, don't let the things like small things like money concern you. Just what billionaires say. Don't <laughs> people that have a jet ski in their pool. That's the type of shit they talk yeah. about. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Star Wars is just a, a. I mean, looking around your room, Bobby. There's Star Wars stuff here, but it's so much collectible stuff here from other pro- i mean this was all launched based on that oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah 1000 merchandising premise from star Wars. 1000 really. i mean without that we wouldn't have a lot of this 1000 percent. it's and so i was just so happy for him believe it or not and then i find out oh they're gonna make more movies i'm like <clears throat> you know when when this buyout happened i was my job was killing me i'm very identified with my job and when things are bad like i feel terrible I'm, and then it's like, but it's like, it's almost like, oh, they're expanding the Skywalker saga. I'm like, I'm going to have to stay alive to watch all this. Do I think about that too. Do you think about that? Your mortality in regards to Star Wars? Yes. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm like, I have children, Brink. Yeah. I'm supposed to stick around for them. But I'm like, I got to make it to fucking 2019 yeah. to finish this one off. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like, I, it's like, I was like, oh. Yeah, and it was because like I was like my job is driving me nuts. I was like, oh, you know, I would like go to sleep, and like the only time I could get some sleep 
was like, you know, there might be a chance you don't wake up tomorrow. And then that would just totally relax me and allow me to get to bed, you know, kind of thing. Dude, you're in your dark place. Yeah, it was dark. It was dark. (laughs) Um, And so, but then when this news comes out, I'm like, I'm going to have to do something because I got to see what's going on. Well, that's kind of beautiful in a way. That Star Wars kind of motivated you to fucking live. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, do you think you were really on the brink of like... Oh, I was, so to speak. Yeah, no, but I wasn't going to do anything drastic. I was right. just praying that I don't wake up in the morning so I can. That's a fucking calm my bummer. Mind. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And then, and then, but the, you know, like, like, I, I love that. Right. I mean, not that you were on the brink, so to speak, of that, but that you know that that you were that Star Wars brought some motivation back. You know, like yeah. I dig that, man. Well, that, and then the realms started happening around the same time too. So no it shit, really helped. Yeah. Huh. So that's that, that that needs to be a breaking the mold topic right there. Yeah. Like that's that's real stuff. That's yeah. the kind of stuff that makes you know. Mm-hmm. I would dig into that. All right. Uh, but as far got to as... be vulnerable if you want to take this thing to the next level. Okay. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> um, but as far as you know, there were always rumblings. Oh, Disney's gonna mess it up and stuff. It's like I didn't. I was like I, I don't. I, I didn't care at the time. I was like, okay, there's gonna be more. Mm. Wow, there's gonna be a lot more. Wow. I thought I, I thought I was kind of done with Star Wars. I was, I'm collecting Transformers now. It's like I'm gonna have to start collecting Star Wars now, you know, kind of <laughs> stuff. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it was exciting. I I didn't it, when they started talking about bringing Han and Luke back and stuff. Though I was like, you know, I don't know if we really need to do that. I I can't I can't quite articulate it because I know I went through a whole kind of wide range of should they do it or shouldn't they do it. Um, but, uh, in the end though, I was extremely happy that Star Wars would live on because like you said, the only thing new we were getting, people were writing EU books. We had some comics and people were making video games really. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was just, it was just old hat at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice. It's like, oh, we're going to get an expansion and we're going to see new stuff. So, um, yeah. And and again, I never I never participated in any fiction post Jedi, so this right. is all going to be brand new ground for me. I mean, I have a bunch of friends to experience it with as well, which so. is nice too. That um, you don't have anything to bounce it off of, right. you know. Like I don't have any concept of what that's like, mm. you know, because everything I watch after Return of the Jedi, I am watching with a lens of well, I kind of know what this world is or was at one point gotcha. you know uh so how did you feel about force awakens coming out of it oh you love that movie i love that movie a lot i went to see it seven times in Dang. a matter of two weeks Me too. i think well, not nice. two weeks, but i saw it a lot um i happened to be uh on vacation a lot at the end of the year that year and uh yeah i saw it three times then i saw it with my family and then i saw it another three times after that i couldn't get enough of it um obviously uh, the Star Wars formula that you talk about, but uh, the the soundtrack and this this Ray, she's so very interesting to mm. me and um, endearing and charming. Yes, I, I couldn't get enough of it. Um, Another thing we didn't mention last night that I wanted to, I loved her going down the hill mm-hmm. in this yeah. in yeah. this yeah. Kid again almost. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I that that scene with the Falcon being chased by the Tie Fighters on Jakku. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was I when that thing finally came on streaming, I rewound and watched that thing twenty times. I couldn't. St- I lo- talk about editing. That is like one of the most edit- best mm-hmm. edited scenes ever in Star Wars. I, I and I would keep pausing it, and every time they focused on Ray in that cockpit, she's like reaching to you know mm-hmm. or whatever, or like when the Falcon's about to make a dive, you see her lean forward, yeah, and. I'm getting chills just thinking about that scene. I don't know. I, maybe it's the Millennium Falcon. There's a rule of that shit. Like it's like a phrase. Like uh, cut to the action. Mm-hmm. Like you're always supposed to. Like during a sequence like that, you're supposed to always cut on the, the the verb, so to oh, speak. Okay. You know, it's done extremely well. And then like her facial expressions, it was so. It was just so real. And then, the Falcon is is bobbing and weaving. And then this one scene, you can see it where it's like. It's fucking moving, man. It's mm. like, and it's, oh, it's just, yeah. I want to go see it right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you, like if you see a, like a really fast car driving past you on the highway or, or whatever, and you can, you can tell, it's like that motherfucker's moving. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that movie moves in general, you know, yeah. like that's, it's a fast paced um, yeah. movie. So starting out, I didn't really know what to think of Finn. I was like, 
wow, so that's what's under the helmets of these stormtroopers? It's not so scary anymore, right? You got these buffoons under there. <laughs> moppers. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giving moppers okay. a bad name. Um, Kylo, I, I couldn't stand. I mean, if Anakin, I figured Anakin in episode two is not going to drive me crazy. Why is this guy driving me crazy? I was mm. just, God, the temper tantrums and the. Uh, well, it's whatever. in his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but other than that, I, I liked it a, a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I was sad to see Han go, uh, Chewie exploding and going ape shit. Chewie having fingers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chewie having fingers. <laughs> but well, again, the, see, that's something that's always there. You just don't yeah. Yeah. Just cover it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, but the mystery in the shroud of the, the Luke's lightsaber is back. I really wish that got developed a little bit more in this trilogy of uh, the, but again, who is Ray? This whole, this is our first time like of this age being able to comprehend this mystery of this, this, uh, you got my wife's disease, man. I've pushed that mic close to him like 13 <laughs> times. And then this is what he did. I've been watching it. You could do like this. Like, yeah, it's just, it's something about it where I just, I just <laughs> what is it? The, um, well, they call it the cliffhanger. This yeah. Fucking cliffhanger. And the mystery box, right? It's like, yeah. oh, and it's, <clears throat> this movie, it's not just the movie. It's the 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 talking about it and everything. Mm. But that's, that, that is Star Wars, and right? And that's why you want to keep going to see it, because you want to yep. talk to somebody. I'm like, I'm going to go see it again, and I got to stay focused this? for the Did one I, part. Yep. Oh, yeah. God, it's so good. That's what I love about Star Wars. Yeah, that was, that was, that's why I loved it. And, like, yeah. in, the, in the theories and the talking, and, like, I, I think, like, like, with that shit, like, like I don't. To me, it doesn't matter about being right or wrong about it. Mm-hmm. It's like it's just the dialogue of it that's fun to do. Yeah. Do you know? And uh, yeah, speaking of dialogue, there's uh, when they are on Maz's planet and the good guys come to save the day, and you see Poe do this crazy stuff in his X-wing, and Finn has to look up and be like, "That's one hell of a pilot." And I'm like. Dude, don't narrate the movie for me. Mm. I I can see that he is. Why why do you, I don't know. I don't maybe I don't know people that talk like this in real life. They don't. Right. And then, so why is and I remember Lucas's Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas's dialogue was always people give it shit. It's like who talks like that? And I'm like I'm watching these new ones. I'm like who fucking talks like this? Like people maybe on like reality shows where they're directed to talk with and because it's, it's not really reality they say stupid shit like this. But yeah. anyway, that's really my only main gripe. Mm. My my gripe I think with that one dialogue wise was that some of it, some of it seemed too familiar. Like, and I don't mean in, in the sense of rehashing four or whatever, but I mean like this like the Star Wars characters all talk in English. But it's not how we talk. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't say cat. We don't, you know, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rhythm to it, right? But in this one, it seems like Finn talked like a guy that lived down the street. Yes. That, yeah. that bothered me. Where, like, I, I, I felt like he was going to say, like, you go girl or something mm-hmm. at some point. Where I was like, wait, this, oh, this no. doesn't fit, you know? Like, Droid, please. Yeah. But, but I feel like it got better. Like, yeah. eight, it got better. And then it doesn't bother me so much in nine. But I might be numb to it a little yeah. bit in nine. Yeah. Because he's still doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not as bad. It was it was the worst in seven. It's jar- the most jarring in seven, mm-hmm. I think. You know, but yeah, and yeah, I just loved all of it. It was they got me with the fan service. I yeah. think and the and the formula for how it all works. I mean, I think when the 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 Star Killer base was like Death Star again. All right, fine. Yeah, I'm I'm just gobbling it up, soaking it all in. It's good. I'm trying to think. There's another thing about nine. I wish that the star destroyer couldn't blow up the planet by mm. itself. I wish that it had to take a fleet to like surround yeah, it and yeah. brr, 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 and then move on to the next one. Like, but whatever. <clears throat> Spoilers. <laughs> um, oh shit! I'll have to put that in the. Yeah. Oh, we've already spoiled a few things. Yeah. So far. yeah. Put, put a disclaimer at the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I, I thought that the way that that shot landed, that just a chunk was going to get blown out, kind of like Jetta. Because mm-hmm. that planet didn't get destroyed. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I like that. I like that. I like that better. Like if it would have been here, because I'll I, write so, the I'll next be, one. I, yeah, thank you. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just tired of the same. Yeah. Thing. You know? Well, what if it destroyed stars instead, like by its as its name indicates? <laughs> they, they did that in a book, and it was terrible. <laughs> 
so it, it was called the Sun Crusher. <laughs> we don't. So move on. Let's, let's, get, let's get past it. No, we must bring back the EU. Yeah. <laughs> Legends. You know me. I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, um, keep the characters. 86. A lot of the stories. Mm-hmm. Kind of my view on the EU. Um, all right. So then. So then, uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. Um, I made the mistake of going to see that movie. I was uh, I was in a terrible mood. I had a rough day at work, stuff like that. I'm like, all right, Star Wars, bring me out of it. And when it the movie started, and I'm like, it's got this knockoff soundtrack. I was like, oh, this. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> um, and and then we start getting introduced to uh, how many times do we have to say the word hope in a Star Wars movie. And I was, I can't help it's but built see. On it. I can't see help but see it's a reflection of the current times going on in this country with all this hope crap. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what, people, you got to go out and fucking make this happen and stop fucking hoping because hoping's not a plan. Yes. But anyway, I'm not gonna get. I went to go see it a second time afterwards, and <laughs> I liked it a lot better. Uh, you know, when my mood had changed. I think I had talked to you as well. We exchanged some texts, uh, and. Um, it's 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 probably in my top four of the Star Wars movies at this point now. Um, again, because it's it's just a New Hope, just a little bit different, you know. See, uh, see, see I, I feel like this one is what I like about Rogue One is that it does seem different mm-hmm. to me. Like it, it doesn't. It seems like what I would expect a spinoff to feel like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, where Solo is like, you know, a different a different ball of wax for me, where it's like. This feels like a television made in like a tele. It feels like a Hallmark Star Wars movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I, I see what you mean there. Yeah. Um. So what about uh? Oh, I do want to say the Tarkin one. Uh, the Tarkin in that movie. Uh huh. I just I had no idea this was a thing that was happening. Um, and then when I see him, I was like, "There's this dude sitting next to me." I'm like, I do this a lot when I'm in movies. Strangers sitting next to me. I'm like, I'm like, dude. He goes. He goes, yeah, that's Tarkin. I'm like, I know it is. He's fucking dead. <laughs> and he's like, no, he well, he was killed in the movie after. I'm like, turns out yeah. the guy was a little special. Right, 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 right. On the spectrum. And I was like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a fucking digital thing up there. I wasn't gonna start yelling in the movie. <laughs> you know, it, like now that you say that, because I didn't know any of that either. I kind of went into Rogue One blind and. Well, I think we all did. Those trailers had nothing in the actual. But world. I mean, I'm still, I, I still have my finger on the, le- on the, on the, uh, the, the pulse. leaks pulse, yeah. you know, and like, but, but that's the thing about this. It's bad robot. Mm. Bad robot has a bad leak Ooh. because <laughs> because seven I knew like three months before, nine I knew about two and a half months before, eight I knew a week before. So they kept it tight pretty much until it started getting premiered. You know, same with Rogue One and uh, Solo. I didn't know a shit really about it. I knew a couple things here and there, but for the most part, but it's just seven and nine. There's somebody up there that's a chatty patty. Yeah, they got to get a hold of that. But uh, again, I was I was just blown away. It's like, so this is what they can do now. And immediately, it's kind of it kind of took me out of the movie a little bit because I'm starting to rack my brain. I'm like, how, how could they use this for other things? Um, kind of thing. So maybe that was a little bit jarring too the first time I saw it. So. The second time I went in, just absorbed it all in like they like they wanted to, uh, you know, show it to me. And sometimes that's just what you got to do. Um, I like the fact that it uh, it showed those rebels as not being these high and mighty people. Well, that, well. that war is nerdy. Yeah. So, again, a lot of good growth and expansion in the story mm. and world. Help, yeah. yeah, to help you appreciate the, the storyline for the original trilogy. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then the last Jedi, which is a, a conversation that you and I have beat up for years now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, to go on the record, which I may have done in previous podcasts, because I'm on so many. But uh, weird flex. I that. I am not. I am. I have no problem with the arc that Luke took uh, in that regard. Like that is not why I don't like this movie. Um, I don't care about the weird space chase and the violation of physics and all that stuff that does not take me out of this movie. I just think it is not a well done movie. I mean, it looks great, but I think this story is 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 terrible for for uh, 
the the gratuitous silliness of this movie is just ridiculous. And then people fire back at me. He's like, well, there's jokes in the other ones and stupid stuff in those. I'm like, yeah, but it's not trying that hard, you know, in those other movies. Like some of the stuff is just natural yeah, I don't agree. humor. Um, I don't agree. I, I, I do agree with the exception of episode two. And one and six. There's a lot of goofy shit in those three movies. Mm-hmm. Mm. Actually, three as well. See, you know, we're going to have three. This. Let's not harp on this. I don't want to harp on it, but I like, <laughs> like, but I mean, like, like Jar Jar zaps his face and then it, my tongue. I can't tell mm-hmm. my tongue. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's there. That, it that, you know, like these. I feel like sometimes mm-hmm. we forget these things exist because we look through Star Wars retrospectively <clears throat> with yeah. rose-colored glasses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I could tell you, I definitely dismiss something like Jar Jar, but like thinking about Episode Three, like the way the battle droids act and they. Like they see an elevator shooting up, you know. It's like first, first it's hands up, Jedi. You're you're hanging with that's stupid. But the elevator's coming up and they're looking at it. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. But they don't move. Right. Right. <laughs> like so to, to but, me because to but, me but it's no, somehow ahead. that's just not as offensive as a bad prank call. So 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 <laughs> I agree that one's bad. I so I agree that's bad. And that's but that sets the tone for the rest I of agree. the movie. So I agree. Even if you have something that's really not that bad and it's just like a slight like eh, it it makes it worse because it just keeps impacting on itself all right so let me i'll try to explain what i don't like about that yeah. and, and we watched it yesterday and all together and i could have asked you to pause that movie 50 times so i could just bitch about it because when i watch <laughs> this movie at home i pause it and i bitch to myself and i yell at myself like i'm yelling at somebody sitting next to me I'm like this is why this movie sucks and <laughs> It's, it takes me a long time to get to that movie because I do pause and, and just mm-hmm. scream. I so the the joke in the beginning, you, you turn out you watch the movie on subtitles. Is not only is he just going saying stupid shit to to Hux, but he's actually calling him Hugs. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even cap. I hate this even more now. When when BB-8 goes down to fix the ship. He has to put all his fingers in all the holes, mm-hmm. and then that doesn't work, so he smashes his hole. I'm like, no. It was, then you smash your whole head. I'm like, you know, why don't you just have Poe? So if the fingers don't do the job, you just smash it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when when Poe's blowing up all the cannons on the, on the Dreadnought, I mean, why even add in the whole thing where his ship's broken and he can't finish? I mean, just get it done. When the chick page is in the bomber, and it's like, hey, oh, of course, now there's only one bomber left, but hey, you're our last hope. Come on, Paige, what's going on? What's going on? It's like, oh, not only do I have to go do this because the pilot died or whatever, I got to I gotta uh, get the controller. I can't find the controller. Oh, I dropped the controller. Oh, I fell down the thing. Oh, the controller's still up there. Let me kick the thing and let me put this poignant music on mm-hmm. the, to build up the 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 stress of this scene and i'm just like sitting here I'm like just come on already and not only that she's got to kick it and then the controller falls and no she doesn't it goes down and she has to reach down and then it, grab it, it and then yeah. it's already gone boom <laughs> i'm just like dude I love these, that. These movies don't have to take this damn long. I mean, I don't even know who this character is. I know that. <laughs> I love that I, whole sequence. All right. Like, <laughs> I, like, 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 I love the shit out of it. Like, I it's, can't it's, stand it's, it. it's what, like, and, and then when the, the, the camera is over top and she's looking down and all the bombs are dropping and it's on, like, I love all of that shit. Well, but you and I have had these conversations plenty of times. And whenever we dig, whenever we start digging, do you know where it ends? Luke died. It's happened with you and I Me. N- numerous times. When we were at Dust House, we're, you were there. Yeah. When we were at Dust House and you were sitting on that couch, I fucking battered you to the goddamn ground. And when you were done, do you know what you said? They killed Luke. It's the only way. That's I, what you said. It's the only way I could win that conversation. You know me, I can't articulate. <laughs> and, and I'm at Dust House, I'm but fucking see, that's having what, see, like a half a case of beer. But every time you and I talk about it, uh, whenever we, it always starts with these superficial ass like she holds her thing and she bumps. I'm like, what the fuck? There's one bomber left. There was one fucking X-wing left. What the fuck is wrong with you? What planet are you on? Why are you holding this to a different standard? It's like you know what I hate about Batman, the fucking BVS. It starts off with his parents are dead. 
Well, that's bullshit. <laughs> it's like, what fucking? What did you expect? So, like, but 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 but, but whenever we dig into it, you're then, and it's at a certain point, you crack, and you're like, they killed Luke. But, I think this entire movie for you, that's like a Trump. That's just like a Trump card to play. It's like, <laughs> shut up, Luke died. <laughs> Stop, stop undermining my argument. Oh yeah, well Luke died. <laughs> you know, Drop the mic, and, and it like, turns out what, what was I don't it? even care that Luke died. What, what was it yesterday? It was like you were like, "That's too silly." I'm like, "Dude, R2 zapped the Ewok in the butt and made him jump up and do a split and touch his toes." Mm-hmm. That like I, I don't under, that, that's the shit. I'm like, why why are we seeing this movie so differently? And and you and I have had these conversations, and, and we've always walked away from it, friends, mm-hmm. it's, it, which is beautiful. That's that's how you have a conversation about it. But I, I, I do feel like most of the people that I talked about uh, about uh, Last Jedi, it comes down to one of two things. It's the space chase storyline mm. that is just a turnoff, mm-hmm. or it's what they did with my Superman. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> My, that's predicated on bullshit because no. that motherfucker fucked up the first three movies left and right. And nobody gave a shit then, but now we expect them to be perfect. Yeah, but it's like I, I just, I, I think I'm just becoming impatient, and I, I don't like. I, I don't know what. But it is. then it's we just Ryan talked about Jones. episode three that you like it to take a little time, and you like it's inconsistent. It's like your criticisms are inconsistent. I, I think, There's something else going on with I you. Think, no, I think no. it's just I don't care. I really, I think well, it just comes up where I just don't care. Because like your your the example of your scene, it's something that's elongated that didn't need to be. It's mm-hmm. shot amazingly. The whole sequence. There's a lot of things about it that don't necessarily make sense. Um, like the slow moving bombers. Like why would you, why do you have tightly packed ships with these? Like what are they? Magnetic bombs, like, and they start well, going all over the place, blowing that, each other up. That, like, that doesn't even bother. I just but, think, but you, like you, you want you want a brisk pace. Well, no, you don't want it to go too slow. I, you don't want it to go too no, fast. No, no, no. Kind of like your thing with too many MacGuffins like. in that know. one scene. There's too many things that are going wrong in that sequence to have it go right. There like, is. Can't, why can't it just be? She sees it. She goes. She sets the bombs. And you hit a button. No, no, yeah. No. Uh, this is an advanced starfighter. Why isn't there a button to hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's remote. true. Like, yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean it's also are... an advanced starfighter. You have to hit the fucking thing for it to turn on. Do you know what I mean? But, like, but it's... these technical gripes Alexa, are... launch bombs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, be careful. <laughs> be very careful. <laughs> Dude. That's not that's not funny. Yeah, we'll get locked up. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess it is a long time ago, so well, they don't yeah. have Alexa yet. So. No, no, but the but the thing is, is but they uh, have Sam Jackson. Like, <laughs> like all of those technical things. Those are not my gripes. Like to me, like as I'm watching this, I feel like Ryan Johnson. I feel like he's like, I've got it. I've got the ultimate stage, and I'm just going to use this movie to showcase filmmaking talent that I have. Regard, I'm going to put a scene that causes this kind of stuff and this kind of stuff and i'm like you know i don't i don't care i just i don't know what it is i don't think i liked looper either for something i gotta rewatch that movie again but i don't think i want I, to. I, I like a lot of that movie i don't like the yeah, whole product but, because it gets like weird i don't know what it down. is with me in this movie i don't have I, I don't have the hatred toward it that that is what you see and you know on the on the youtubes and stuff like or that. in front of me <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh I don't know. There's just unnecessary. Maybe it's just that type of silliness. Those particular jokes that they use, I just don't find funny. I find them just time wasting. And like, why? Why does? Why does Finn have to fall out of the thing? And I, I don't know. It just all mm. of a sudden in thirty seconds, they're like, I know how space tracking works. How do I get on that ship? Because I'm the only one that can fix it. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and the lead ship. And I'm like, how do you know which is the lead ship? Does it just because the biggest one is always. Well, they do that in nine too. Yeah, and the thing is, is like I I listen to myself yelling about this movie when I watch it, and sometimes like Brian, just why are you so mad? I just yeah, there's I, something else there, man. I I, well, I there's I something else I there. I don't like the code ring thing, the decoder <laughs> ring. I I feel that this movie is the most Disney of the movies. I think I feel like mm. they might as well just throw a princess in here and have her trying <laughs> to find the love of her life. I I, I don't know. It just. <laughs> You know, you know what I think. Um, also, because I think it's the darkest one by far. I don't know. I think I think the things that the try, the beats that they try to do with all this hopefulness and and things like that. You know, I'm getting older and getting a little more crotchety, I guess. And I was like, look, stop trying to to weaken or brighten up my heart or something. <clears throat> well, like I that. would I like them. I can't. Just shut up. I would <laughs> like them to get back to the more serious Star Wars elements, like um. 
one of my most famous and favorite serious Star Wars moments is what, Jedi. Wait, mm, e, er, oh, you're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Come oh, on, man. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I agree that four and five are different. Mm-hmm. I, I like they are, uh, but six changed the way Star Wars will forever be made. Man, you sure it wasn't the holiday special? It could have been. It could have been. But <laughs> six is where it became about merchandising. Six is where the dollar bill definitely became at the yeah. forefront of that story. And ever since six, it's gotten goofier. It's gotten lighter. It's gotten more of a money machine. Yeah. And them the rules now. Yeah. And, and and also too, I mean, we didn't talk about this. Uh, seems like a lifetime ago, but you know when we were discussing the original trilogies, like you, mm. yeah, four and six were my favorites as a kid. Five, I would fast forward. I would watch the Snow Planet. Yep. Fast forward to get yep. to the end. You know all that other stuff. Um, who cares about what's going on in Dagobah? Right. But, uh, Dagobah. I want to see Boba but, uh, Fett. <laughs> but for the Last Jedi too, you know, as I as I become more attuned to catching up uh, or picking up on certain things during the movies, uh, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. And like those movies get me, like if I need to be in a good mood, I'll just watch one of those. Mm-hmm. And John Williams does the music for those movies as well. Correct, but it's um, all just Hedwig's theme. As as John Williams has has gotten older, I've seen I I'll, I will listen to soundtracks on my you know phone or whatever, and sometimes I can't tell. I'm like, is this a from the prequel movie or is this from the from the Harry Potter these mm. these songs start to run together and what I'm getting at <clears throat> Rose's theme evokes emotions from Harry Potter in me that are not earned in The Last Jedi I didn't know she had a theme I didn't either necessarily well it's the music it's the music that plays whenever she's on there being a sad puss <laughs> and and that music when it plays like it reminds me very much of of Harry Potter movies which you try to evoke a different emotion out of me because I'm enjoying those movies and this is like, I feel like I'm being violated in some regard. <laughs> like, John Williams, stop. Like, no, Rose has not earned the appreciation that I have for Harry Potter right mm. now. Stop <laughs> trying to get me with that, with that music. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just, I, I realized that a few months ago, too, when I rewatched it. You know, and a lot of, I think, uh, and just to be clear and, and play it fairly, a lot of people mis- misconstrue my, my view of The Last Jedi also because I do love it. Mm-hmm. But I, it's far from a perfect film for me. I know. Like, I from the from the Snoke throne room scene to the the problem is for me from the Snoke th- throne room scene to the end, which is like half a movie. I feel like I love every second of it, and there's not another Star Wars movie that's like that for me. Mm. You know, that's what makes that movie special for me is that I don't the first half of it. I like like some parts, don't like some parts, love some parts, don't love some parts. Even hate a few parts, mm-hmm. which is rare. But the second half, I'm not sure if I love anything as consistently in the second half of any Star Wars film like I love that part. Yeah. And I think that's what's kind of frustrating when you when you have these conversations with people because it's like, how can you rank this movie so high when you actually hate all the parts that I hate? Mm-hmm. And and I don't rank it that high. Mm-hmm. Um, when we did our stuff before, when we watched this, when we did our uh, non-spoiler reviews and things, I ended up ranking it 6.5. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why? Because that's the same score I gave Phantom Menace. Because when I rewatch this movie, I'm going to be fast forwarding through parts, and basically that's why I scored it that way. Mm-hmm. And but but to hear, Bobby, I, I you're in my ear all week long. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, right. I listen to this man talk a lot, uh-huh. and it's just we agree on a lot of things. I mean, we're friends. Yeah, I like you, but I I can't get over the fact that you keep ranking this movie so goddamn high when you don't like half of it. And it just, but that's not true either. But that's not true it either. Drives me crazy. That's not true either, though. But see, that, 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 and that's that's part of the thing where, it, like, the world is starting to turn into my children, where no one is listening to me anymore. <laughs> 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 it's not that I don't like half the movie; it's that I don't love the first half of the movie all the way through, mm-hmm. like I love the back half of the movie all the way through. Everything on Octu, I love. Um. All of the Finn journey, I do not. Right. You know, the the beginning space fight scene, I love. It's one of my favorite Star Wars space fight scenes. You know? So it's like, it's not that it's perfect, 
the first half, where I think the last half is perfect. It's that, but at the same time, I don't hate it. Mm. You know, so it's like you have a hundred percent love on the back half, and you got like yeah. Fifty percent love, and you average them together, and like I don't know if there's any other movie like that for me within the, within that saga, with the exception of Five and Rogue One, yeah. where I put in that in that same thing. Like um, Revenge of the Sith, I kind of put there. Like that movie, the first part of it, I can kind of take or leave from the Jedi are relentless. <laughs> from that point <laughs> That's forward, the face I hear about. <laughs> <laughs> from from that point forward, I pretty much ride with it all the way to the end yeah. with a few goofy parts. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, to get into like the goofy hum- humor and shit, like what a drag. I'm quite beside myself. Like I'm beside myself right now because I feel like we need to get a grip on on how we view these things. And, and and I think that a lot of times we we apply four and five to how we see it all, but most of them aren't like yeah. that. And mm-hmm. I agree. I prefer the vibe of four and five. Also, I put Rogue One in the same pocket as four and five tone wise. All right. But that's not what Star Wars is anymore, for better or worse. Yeah. You know, and you got to make a decision whether or not you're okay with that or not okay with that. Yeah, and I've come to grips with like you know, yeah, this there's a new generation experiencing Star Wars, and this it, yeah. it calls out to their sensibilities and how media is given to them these days. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. You know, there's no there's no there's no need to really fight about it anymore uh, in regards to whether or not people of my generation like it. It's like, let it go. They're, this is a, would, look, you say dude, it's, would you say it's time to let old things die? Yeah. <laughs> dude, yeah. Kill it if you have to. You know what? I, I'm, I can just, I can easily go back to, yeah, episode six. All right, stop. You know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, and then the I other. Mean, my buddy Gary, you know, he, he was at, he was a little bit older when those movies were coming out. Mm-hmm. And six for him is what eight is for some people. It's what episode one is for some people. It's, that's when he decided, fuck everything. Oh, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he would be a great guy to have in here, by the way. Oh, yeah. But we'd need all the blood pressure medicine lined up. And <laughs> you thought this was rough. Jesus. Yeah, but, uh, it, you know, at least the silly parts in six are very interesting, though. I mean, you got... I think that's I, I think that's that's interesting to a five year old dude. Salacious no, no, crow. No, no, no. The uh, <laughs> like like how how how. <laughs> I was refer- probably the only good thing in that movie. I was <laughs> I was referring to the bear battle, but basically like like the ingenuity on how to take out the ATSTs. I don't dude, know if that was the way that this movie ended, people would be tearing it apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The that, Ewoks throw logs at Star Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people and, like just them. It's, it's, I think, like w- w- we take that five-year-old <laughs> sensibility with us down the road, and and, and no matter how, like we, we're going to be seventy-five years old and be like, but you know what? A, a little teddy bear with a stick beating a stormtrooper that's militarily trained—that makes perfect sense. But this new shit they're doing is getting out of control. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they did the battle horn that inspired the bears to yes. fight better than they ever had. You see, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but <laughs> you guys underestimate bears. You got care bears. You got gummy bears. Now, if these fucking things look like grizzlies, then it'd be a different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back, which we could have almost had too. Yeah, it was Planet supposed to. It was supposed to be Wookies, you know. Yeah. But, but but they'd established that Chewie was tech savvy. Yeah, but back to the last chat. I mean, I can keep going on, but the the. We talked about a little bit yesterday the the character development of Poe. I just, I just don't like the message this sends. How he basically gets off scot free for disobeying authoritative figures and mm-hmm. going against them. He he, all the resistance, all of the resistance is basically dead because of the mistake that he and Finn and Rose launched. And mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, I like him too. And Leia's like, don't look at me, follow him. And I yep. can't get I can't let that go. <laughs> and and the thing is you have the character development there for him in that movie, but it but it's it's slight. Like you really yeah. gotta be paying attention and you could miss it. It's easy, especially at the end there. You know, it's funny because like uh like you saying that, uh yeah, you 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 can't forgive him for being bad at his job, necessarily, you know, kind of. And when I would talk to Adam, he he hates it too. Mm-hmm. And he was like he hates it for the exact opposite reason that like, no, you should have given him more control. Mm. You should, you know what I mean? Like it's, but it's so interesting. Mm. It's so interesting. Like, like, no, he's commander. He's a commander. He needs to be in command. That's what commanders do. You know Mm. what I mean? It's so interesting where I'm like, kind of like, 
to say I don't give a shit about Poe and Finn is not entirely fair, but I don't connect with either one of those characters. Yeah. You know, I, I connected, honestly, I liked Poe more in seven. I connected more with Finn in eight because of his arc. Yeah. You know, like. Oh, which they didn't even expound on in nine. What's him, up? And, him and DJ's conversation didn't even come up. Well, I don't even mean that. I mean, I mean the fact of like you're part of an organization that you're not willing to kill for yeah. to be part of an organization that you're willing to die for. Like that's there's a beauty to that. Yeah. And I'm, but like I don't need him in nine. Like I think he could have died in eight, and it could have been more powerful. Mm. You know. But <clears throat> anyway, solo. You know what? A fun romp. Uh, one of the things I really, really enjoyed about that movie as I keep saying words in my mouth while I wait for it to come into my mind, is... <laughs> um, is, uh... <clears throat> I really like the fact that that droid LV or whatever, like, is part of the Millennium Falcon's personality. Like, that was really cool. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting, uh, in Return of the Jedi, when Han and Lon- Lando are... They're getting ready to go on their separate mission. But what if he was Londo? <laughs> <laughs> or what if every time he called Han Han, Han and Londo, then Han would be like, "Yeah, what do you need, Londo?" Yeah. It's like that would have been fun. Yeah. Didn't I say that that it would, it's a good like inside joke? Because <laughs> doesn't he still refer to him as Han? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Lando goes like this to him, like right before they leave, and so and, and Han says, gives the signal back. I noticed that uh, when. Lando and LV L seven. I don't even know. I don't. I don't. L three. L three. L three. Oh wow. I don't care for that character much, and I'm actually irritated yeah. that she's part of the Falcon. Yeah. When oh, when they sit down in the cockpit. <laughs> when the, so funny. <laughs> when they, I, I, I like the idea that it's a bit of a bitchy droid, but like that ship is against him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always is. But uh, oh wow, that is interesting. Yeah. You don't need your oh, hyperdrive that, today. That's fucked up, yeah. dude. That's messed. Oh yeah. man, that actually makes me like it a little bit. Dude. <laughs> that's funny, actually. Yeah. But I liked how when they sat down in the cockpit together, they did the the fingers to the thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, so there's a little origin to that. I like the fact that we got to see that the Millennium Falcon actually has steering wheels in it because I don't think we've ever seen them before. I, as a kid, I was like, what are they? Like there's right. no yoke, there's no. Right, right, right. I was right, like, right. how do they steer this thing? We finally see that for the first time. Um, the Kessel Run, eh, I, I really thought it was something different. Um, I thought it was gonna be like slingshotting around planets in a system to do something. But what they give us is throwaway. Mm-hmm. Well, it's there's a lot of smoke, and uh, <laughs> there's a squid monster, and. And that's a, somehow there's a Star Destroyer. Kessel Run or Watchmen? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, uh, you know, I, I take it or leave it. I mean, it's 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 fine. It's an enjoyable movie. I really just wanted to see The Origins of the Falcon. It was really the only reason why I wanted to watch it. And uh, <laughs> it, it was chewy. Like you say, it's Chewy's movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to say, I really like those scenes. Those mm-hmm. are good beats. Yeah, um, I do too. And, and I liked that it. it was this nice ship. It was a beautiful ship. Mm-hmm. Day one. <laughs> Rex and... <laughs> it was a very Lando ship until Han got behind that motherfucker. Oh. And then it became a very Han ship. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to my ship? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the ending, uh, I could probably leave some of it where, what, they give the... They sell... They give the, the fuel to the people, yeah, which start, is basically to help... Start, start the rebellion. Start the rebellion. I was like... Yeah. All right. Fine. Whatever. Oh, and one thing I do don't so like about funny, that man. movie. That's the part I like. I got like that. When they're on the land. And so that's aside from Chewie and Han sitting together in the Falcon for the first mm-hmm. time. That is my favorite part of that movie. Oh, yeah. It's he, like you and I, we both enjoy the Star Wars restaurant. We get totally different meals. Yeah. <laughs> I think, well, yeah there are some fact. things that are different. I mean, I think, Bobby, you raising three little girls definitely helps you relate more to those kinds of beats where to me i'm just like dude we stop all this all this like uh i don't know fairy tale fantasy crap i mean if you want to take over they should have fucking killed han and lando right there and and you and i are thinking the exact same thing yeah you know what is bullshit about a fantasy (laughs) A fantasy or a fairy tale, you got the young character, right? And he's and he's and he's kinda got the whole world ahead of him. He bumps into an old wizard. 
The old wizard helps guide him. <laughs> he's going to encounter his destiny. Oh, God, he's also going to have a huge sacrifice that's made at his expense. I feel like he stays up at night because he can't sleep. He's practicing all the retorts for everything. <laughs> that's all at some point, Brink, the old wizard is going to have to die so that the young trainee can become who he was meant to be. They should knock all that shit off. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I'm... I'm I think I've just become more identified. Said it better than me. Especially out in the uh, sound space, though. I identify. That's totally different. I used to like to watch the good guys win, but I don't know. It's just, dude, you got to do what you got to do to get shit done around here. And just complaining and telling someone your plight, I don't know. It just kind of drives me nuts. But uh, the, the only real gripe I have about that movie, though, is when... Uh, Daenerys is talking to whomever, mm-hmm. and she looks at Han talking to whom. I guess the the girl, whatever her name is, think he's gonna do the right thing because he's a nice guy. I'm like, dude, don't narrate the movie for me. You yeah. could do that better with just music and the scene. Itself. I agree with that. That I agree with. Yeah. We both enjoy the soup at this restaurant now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then nine. Wow. Actually, I guess Mandalorian. Breaking ground. But it's not over. But how do you feel about Mandalorian so far? Uh, it's nice to to get Star Wars in a different fashion, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, live action Clone Wars, basically. You know, little short, short stories here and there. The the Yoda baby is cute. Um, but I think at this point with everybody calling it Baby Yoda, like I kind of really want it to be Yoda, like regenerated at this point and when i when they finally reveal that it's not actually yoda like i'm like dude i'm seeing yoda in his infant stage like this is how he grew up like this is how i feel about this thing now and i know that that's not true right so when they finally say that it's not yoda i'm just gonna feel a little sad about it do you uh because it's not it's not quite fair to give an opinion on it yet until next week but do you feel uh of the three of the three names he goes by, which is Baby Yoda on the internet, the asset in the first episode, or the child for the rest of the series, what is your favorite of those three? Oh, Baby Yoda. I like the asset. I yeah. like the child. Mm. Well, there we go. Covering all bases. <laughs> You're the tiebreaker. <laughs> I'm always Baby Yoda. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> I have my one friend, She when we watched it with her, she was just like, ay, Dios mío, every time. Like, he's just like, oh, no. It's a cute, I mean, you can't. It's, yeah, it's he's very adorable, cute. Baby Yoda. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I like the series. It's fun. I, I really like the opening soundtrack to it. I noticed in the last episode they departed from that. Mm-hmm. They used a different theme of some kind. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just it's just a guy making his way in the universe, just like Django said, and and I dig it. Um, I don't think it's super outstanding from a TV series perspective, mm-hmm. considering all the things we've seen come off of HBO and things right. like that. So yeah. I don't hold it in that same high regard. Right. But it's doing what it needs to do. Um, a fan service to me is not something I really gripe on. So like, I don't mind seeing oh, you got that right in there. <laughs> 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 well, it's weird. Like the, with all the fan service that they do, I think a lot of it is a bit more on the subtle side. Like anybody that's seen the movies a hundred times or, or ten, even like you're going to catch a lot of stuff. But the casual, I think a lot of yes. it will go over your head. Yeah. But but the casual is also going to catch the right kind of things. Yep, I agree. But they're not shoving. Look, there's a, you know, he's, you, you get that whole crew there, and what, what is that episode chap chapter six uh-huh. that they go they go in there with Bill Burr and then and. and um, yeah, uh, not my favorite episode. The, the girl who constantly does this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that that, was, I that's like the that. only thing I didn't. I'm, I'm dangerous. That was Tonks. I yeah. had no idea. Oh, it was her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nymphadora. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I am dangerous. <laughs> I didn't realize it's And then um, she's like once bitten vampire. Uh, Cl- uh, Clancy Brown was the Deveronian. Yeah. Tiny. Which, I'm like you're like an inch and a half taller than him, dude. He didn't. He didn't speak enough. He's got a great voice, and I feel like you're misusing him if he's not speaking. Mm. He needed to say more. But like you bring in that kind of crew, they could have very easily, even just one of them or all of them, people we know. Oh, it could have been Dengar and this guy, <laughs> and, uh, you know, whoever. But but they didn't do that. That's what I like. They're uh-huh. making a lot of new characters. Yeah, They're making yeah. a lot of new everything. And I like most of the new characters. You know, like I'm like I want to know more more about. It. Unfortunately, I don't get much more about it. But. Mm. Um, Except the one thing that is alarming is the fucking Filoni episode is the one where I like the least amount of characters. Which one? Which one's this? The sniper. Okay. And I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
maybe I don't want you. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Time out, everybody. I might not want this fucking guy here. What? what? Sniper? What, what am I missing? The female kung fu uh, actress in real life. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I Ooh, wasn't yeah. crazy about her. I hated the other dude. Yeah. Um, you know, it's my, probably my least favorite episode of the series, and I think that is the Filoni episode. I don't think we're meant to like that other guy, though. Maybe, but I like. We, I think we are meant to like the episode, though. I think we're. Well, I think that's the case with every episode. That <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm but, saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Is that that's the one that he had? I'm pretty yeah. sure, and that's also the one that I find. And Caleb has brought that to my attention because Caleb hates that dude. And like, I mean, doesn't hate him personally, but Filoni? yeah, oh, is wow. he jealous of the hat? Everybody's jealous of the hat, so we just put that aside. That's that's a baseline. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you feel about the Bryce Dallas Howard episode? That was the one Which, with the ATST. Oh, um, not my favorite either. You could tell, like I, I'm a fan of her, at least Kara on screen. Yeah, I like her too. Uh, that no, I was talking about Bryce. You're talking Dallas about her, Howard, yeah. But, Wait, uh, who? The director. Oh, 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 she oh, directed oh. it. Yeah, she's oh. the the girl from Jurassic World. Oh, oh, okay. Daughter. Um, okay. Who's redhead? She's probably redheaded. Oh, yeah. She, you she's, might remember she's her. She's surprisingly from... attracted to coming from that bloodline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, she's not sharing his hairline. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. And you might remember her from such classics as uh, Spider Man Three. Gwen yeah. Stacy. Yeah, I'm gonna need more information. <laughs> the blonde one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I know who Gwen Stacy is, but I haven't seen. It. I saw. I saw Spider Man. I, like, I saw Spider Man Three in the movie she theater. Played, haven't seen it since. She played the lady in the water. She was the lady. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, like she doesn't direct action based stuff. Like mm, looking yeah. at her at her resume, mm-hmm. so you could tell. Like it focused more on the cutesy part, and you know. So I was like, you know, it's kind of nice. People can get in there and kind of test the waters and see what what they can do but you know it definitely shows and i think yeah. people should 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 realize that and not be so overly critical when they see things that you know don't necessarily that, that episode was interesting uh musically too it was like very stringy i didn't hmm. love that i don't I love the soundtrack calm. of the show overall mm-hmm. I, I like a lot of it. I don't like all of it. it's too conan for me conan oh and then it's got that <laughs> those two, that, no, those two no. chimes in it. Oh, don't listen. ruin it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not crazy about it. But um, episode nine. You're the first person on Force Sensitive to give a opinion on episode nine. All right. Well, I'm glad we don't have. Uh, you're usually rushing people off the microphones when these things go along. Are we okay? To uh, yeah. Well, we're we're coming down. This is the last bit, right? So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so um, we've already spoiled some of it, so sorry if you're listening, and here come more spoilers. Mm. Snoke kills Ray. <laughs> so, so baby Snoke was super cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, there were so many of them. He's got those big neck, neck holes. <laughs> so, can we just call this Star Wars Endgame? Yes. Uh, basically is how it felt to me. Uh, with a little left. touch of uh, Indiana Ray uh, going on her adventure with the uh, seeking the artifacts and the MacGuffins and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Beans, I, greens, potatoes, yeah. tomatoes. <laughs> I, I like this movie. I don't know. Oh, I'm getting tired of talking, I think. But no, I enjoyed the movie a lot. Um, the, the humor in it. For some reason, whether it be the same as the past or like Last Jedi or even the original trilogy, for some reason the the, the humor in this one did not bother me. Maybe I was just in a mood. It's fine. Uh, they they every character that we've known in Star Wars basically got to be on screen and got some time to do something, which super fan service. Not something I expected nor something that I wanted, but they put it in there. Oh, it's definitely something you wanted. And it was okay. Like, I, Han was a fantastic surprise. Agreed. Um, I I really like that scene with the, with Ben, and we can call him Ben now. It's so <laughs> so good. Um, Do you think his full name is Benjamin? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh, it's old Ben. Old, old Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's, is, they weren't saying that Ben Kenobi was old. It's just that's their version of Benjamin. Old Ben. I mean, I mean, I, I rank this thing. 
just under an eight, maybe a little just above an eight. I haven't decided my five my point five swing, uh-huh. uh, but uh, oh, I think we just I think you know putting all this stuff out on the mic last night. I'm think I'm I'm just starting to draw a blank mm-hmm. in regards to this because I know I, I want to go see it again eventually. Mm-hmm. I do too. I know I won't have an opportunity to do probably for another week or so, uh, which kind of stinks. Same. Um, and you know you can show up like 20 minutes late because there's like 30 minutes worth of trailers. Oh, mm. God. Yep. I think there was a one trailer that lasted 30 minutes. Tenet. Which was my favorite trailer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that looks <laughs> fantastic. It, I, I could tell it was Nolan in the first 20 seconds. Yep. Like I was like, as I said to my wife, I was like, this smells like Nolan. I was, I was getting a little anxious in the seat because it was an intense situation. Yeah. And I'm like surrounded by all these people in this theater. When, and that's what that trailer is about. I'm like, starting to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on. All right. <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, what 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 else is there to? I can't, I can't say. I don't I don't know what to say about this movie. I'm just gonna keep think, rambling. Think for just a second. Now, Christopher Nolan, I already know the horrible, dirty things you would do to get him to make a Star Wars movie. Correct. But I'm thinking a Dark Times movie after Order oh, 66. Yes. And the tension that he can create. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Back to you, help, Brink. Help, 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 <laughs> help, help, help guide me through this conversation. Let me ask you. Let me. Let me, let me just. Let me. We'll just wrap it up because right. it is still spoilery. I'm not sure if you want to hear it anyway. So let me give you. Let me give you a couple questions. How do you feel about it? As a, how does it make you feel about the sequel trilogy? It makes me feel glad for the young people that are watching it. I don't. I mean, they they gave a lot of stuff for our generation, but I really think that. Uh, I'm I'm happy I'm happy for the younger generation at this point. They they put out a good trilogy for them to grow up with. Okay. I feel that's that's how I came out of that movie. How do you feel know? about it as a closing book end to the sequel trilogy? Uh Yeah, they pretty much closed it all up. Uh but for the love of God so they threw in so much stuff, man. Like Would you say that they uh, sealed the wounds. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you watch Mandalorian Chapter Seven before you see this. Yeah. Um, the uh, Do you see why I was saying yesterday yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. But <laughs> it's so it's so over the top. Like how <laughs> I felt like a little kid in my backyard, you know, playing Star Wars with my friends or playing something with my friends. But like, no, I have this power. And that means I can do this, this, and this. And then he steps up. Oh yeah, well I've got this power to infinity and beyond, so I can beat your stupid power. I was just, you know, I, at one point I was just like, oh, all right, what's next? Mm. Oh my God, something's something's next. Sorry, I didn't mean lean backwards. <laughs> but all right, so when <laughs> Palpatine can, I mean, Force Lightning's a powerful thing, but when he can bring down an entire fleet out of the sky, that's pretty wild. And then Ray's like, oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna lay on my back and look into the stars and ask them to be with me. And everybody's like, "All right." Now she has all the power of the Jedi to fight him, and it's just, man, it's just, it's just too much. I tell you, you take out. Why does your score not match your ver- your words? I don't know. It, I don't know how to score anything. Should we go back to letters? Is <laughs> I mean, I, like, I said a seven point seven five. That's like a C, right? A high C, <laughs> not the drink. Stuff, stuff my father would have been proud of. <laughs> um, you know, but the thing is, maybe I'm having the same thing with the Last Jedi. Like, maybe I can. I, I'm on a high, Bobby. I can't. You Which can't good. score something off a high. But I, I think, like, just when I listen to you talk, it's like, so you 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 like this movie? You know, you're 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 in a good space with it. You can't decide if it's a, a mid B or a high C. Yeah. And then you're like, when you start complaining about the things that you don't like which is which is always valid to complain yeah. about the things you don't like i'm not one of those people but it's all sequel trilogy related mm. and that's my that, that's kind of my point of view is i i'm more disappointed with what this did as a sequel trilogy and happy with what it did with the original trilogy mm. and i can't help but think much like the last jedi where everything argument broke down to luke skywalker that perhaps you like this movie so much because of what it did for the movies that you really care about when it comes to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, no, no. Yes. Mm. Like I said, I really like the Han scene, right? Uh, Weird. L- let me, let me, let me. When I was watching this movie last <laughs> night, I just remember being like, I'm not sure what to expect. Mm. And it's okay. I'm digging it. 
I like it. Mm. Eh, it's okay. Oh, I love it. I like it. It's okay. I really, really love it. Oh, come on already. All right, this is getting a little ridiculous kind of thing. You know, it's like they can give you so much to, to, to all right, you already got me. You don't have to go over the top and and put all this extra stuff in. It just seemed a little ridiculous at the end. But the things that happen at the end, I think, are not are not overpowering some of the things that I enjoyed uh, for this movie. And so, basically, uh, a couple months ago, I came up with something like, "There's got to be something with this sequel trilogy. Something's got to happen in order for me to come away with something and like it." Mm-hmm as a whole and <clears throat> it turns out to me what i latched on to was the relationship between ray and finn and there's beats in this last movie that seal the deal for me in that mm-hmm. spoiler alert finn is force sensitive right him and ray have a bond of some kind and the fact that in in episode seven they find each other like finn's like dude you're the first person to ever look at me not as a stormtrooper. It turns out this is a very traumatic experience being snatched away and being turned into a agent of evil as, you know, Finn confirms by talking with uh, this girl who supposedly related related to Londo. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, the fact that it preserves their relationship through this whole trilogy is basically what is making me become a, a fan of it as a whole hmm. and, and looking past some of the other things that are a detriment to Did it. Did Finn ever tell her what it was he wanted to tell her? No. That was a loophole. Uh, that was a... What do we think that was? Don't know idea. I wonder if it was that he can... You left the milk in the fridge again <laughs> and it was empty. <laughs> I wonder if it was that, that, he, that he thinks he might be force sensitive, that he can see starting to feel... You know, I, mean, I wonder if it's that. Mm-hmm. Because I can't think of what else it would be. Um, Outside of feelings or something of like that nature, which I would, was seem, thinking, out of, out which of would the, seem weird because she's already into Kylo, way. and it seemed like him and Herman but, but Rose. Yeah, little, him and Rose yeah. were more so. That's the only thing that I could potentially see as be one of those things why he would keep it secret for so long. Yeah. It's that nature, but it didn't really fit the characters, I think. It's interesting. Because um, it looked like they were trying to do like some kind of crappy love triangle that didn't really work. Um, yeah. With with Poe, Finn, and Ray, the um, what was it? Because there's like vague tension, but not not really. Yeah, I would say between like, Ray and Poe, definitely it's there, like that yeah. work relationship style thing. Like yeah. I hate you, but but you know, it might be fun in the corner. There, there was more tension. Yeah, you. but I think Poe might also just be up for it the, all the time. Yeah, yeah. There, there was like. More of a tension between just Poe and Finn. Like, po, what do you want to say, man? What, what you want? I want to know. I want a jealousy. Like, who? Come on, come on, tell me the fucking secret. Who's your friend here? I got you <laughs> off of that. You know, like, I, like, I, I, yeah, I picked up on a little bit of that. Um, but that is that is something. Another thing. It's interesting, and I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up. But like the, the in the leaks, one of the things that was kind of um, like, oh, it might be this or it might be this. We can't really tell, but it's it seems like it's definitely one or the other. Was whether or not she was Finn's sister. Or Lando's daughter. Oh, that was one of the things in the leaks that nobody could really like pin down. And then watching it, I can see how they're having that discussion. Like you were taken too. Like like maybe mm-hmm. like somebody mm-hmm. watching that, whatever, having access to that scene. Mm-hmm. Like, look, I think they're brother and sister. And then I can also see somebody editing or putting together the scene with Lando and being like, no, I think that their daughter and but you know what? father. She's nothing. Yeah, she's not. Not her story. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. But uh, she's also like, I mean, I don't think any of it is locked down. I think it's all up for interpretation. Yeah. So we can wrap this up. Brink, do you have anything? I mean, Brink, I'm fucking losing my mind. Gort, do you have anything that you want to add before we wrap up? Oh, God. A couple uh, rapid fire questions. All right, shoot. What's your favorite coffee mug? <laughs> uh, truth mug. That's a fucking fact right there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has to be. It's truth. So, what's your favorite lightsaber color? Blue. Favorite Ewok? Uh, the, the medicine man guy. Low gray. Uh, I like him. Yeah. He's got swag. Interesting choice. Favorite monster? Rancor. Mm. Mm. Another good choice. Mm-hmm. Favorite dancer in Jabba's Palace? <laughs> There's a right choice here. <laughs> uh, the, 
I don't, well, I don't know her name. Ula. But, what are they? Yes. Yep. That's the one. The one that was still in such good <laughs> shape that they, they brought her back to yeah. do the extra footage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw her uh, when I was at Celebration Three, like just having breakfast. I was like, man, she's still like a beautiful woman. Like, good for her. That's that's all I got. All she, right. She's the only dancer, isn't she? Nah, there's no. a three in the back. Oh no, the other one. <laughs> it's all. Oh back oh, and and and, and, uh, and uh, this, the this, this, the six the six yes, yes six oh yeah yeah that's that's, that's that's even too much, you know, too much. Too much. Um, <laughs> Brink, thank you for coming on. I love uh, the fact that we can disagree about things in Star Wars, and it never affects you, where you and I sit with one another. It's just an exchange of 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 feelings in regards to a franchise that we both love. So I appreciate that. And with that, we'll be out of here. It's nice to do this in person. It's time to think about putting up the real estate sign. Do you know what I mean? Get on down here. All right. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time.